When I teach my writers, I say, look, you guys are going to a war with a, with a knife. I go, I'm going to give you guys a f***ing arsenal. In the two years since we last did this, yeah. has any of your philosophies around technique or anything changed? Again, a motorcycle, how are you going to change a motorcycle? The way it's been designed is the way it's been designed, the mechanics of it, the, di the dynamics of it, the front wheel, engine, rear wheel. Handlebars have always been in the same place. Of course, it's changed through evolution, but you're never changing the body at where it's the best. I'm at a gypsy. And I now, if you've been following the podcast recently, you would know that we're on a massive health kick uh, as we get ready to take on World Vets at Glen Helen in November of 2023. Athletic Greens is not only an all-in-one formula that helps me just cover all my nutritional bases, uh, it's also the first healthy habit that I have uh, that starts every single day. AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that are able to offer gut health support, mood support, can affect your energy each day and contribute to overall healthier looking hair and skin. I've been waiting for this for like in like 10 days, you know, so <laughs> I'm like, dude, I ain't missing this shit. I was thinking about that in the car today. I'm like, it's, I'm, it's so weird how I am. Like when I have something in my vision, in my, my want cage, I guess it's like this just, just fucking force comes out. You know, it's almost like I just barrel through anything that's in my way to get to it. Right. Yeah. You know, I just even feel like when I'm driving, just fuck. I'm, I'm there. there. <laughs> no, nah, just cause I can't stop until what I have in my attention is, is, is kind of caught. If yeah. that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah dude. So. I, I man, we're rolling by the way. So we'll just, let's just roll yeah, off yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Man, I feel the same way, but I think that that's probably just got something to do with being the person that like you that's achieved goals and you know like you've kind of you're you like are the person that you wanted to create you know yeah, like, yeah. i don't think everyone is the person that they want to be and like the, to be that guy you've got to almost have like such an obsessive drive to get the things that you want to get yeah i mean i guess you know for me i've never wanted to be anybody you know it's not like oh i want i want to be like this type of guy or uh oh i want to be like this guy that's a role model to me or whatever i yeah. just never been i've just been 100 percent authentic yeah you know and yeah you what, wanted to be you just me yeah me and that's it and whatever me is is me and uh <clears throat> the same in racing it wasn't like i wanted to be a champion i just love to go fast i love the the challenge i love the work i love the preparation for it you know what i'm saying so having that you know you learn you know when you when you become a competitor for such a long time you become almost like a warrior you know yeah. and that warrior mentality is to to chase to capture to get yeah right so anything that comes into life you just kind of almost have that same mentality even in relationship but that one sometimes that's wrong yeah you know what i mean because you're going about something to get something and you 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 need to give me this, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of just kind of, uh, it's like transaction. Yeah. You're, you're trying to, yeah. And that instead of just giving mm. something and it, what, if they, if they want to take that giving and put it in their pocket, they can throw it in the trash. They can, or step on it. They can, you know, and pretty much that giving is your heart. Right. And that's the same thing with motocross. You know, you give your heart, you give your life, you give you everything to it. And if motocross wants to put you in its pocket and give you a good career cool if it wants to put you in the trash where you don't make it or if it wants to step on you where you come out broken well it's the same thing what did you give it what did you put into it mm. you know did you create a garden you know did you create the foundation yeah, did you cultivate yeah did you cultivate that that love or whatever it is to get what you want and if you did that well then it's easier to kind of to let go you know and the same with like a relationship if you if you gave somebody all your love it's so much easier to to let go, yeah. you know, than to sit there with regret going, man, I wish I would have shown that person a love they deserved, yeah. or I wish I would have put the love and the effort into motocross that I guess it deserved. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. that's my biggest thing is never have regrets. And that's by going at something with full, you know, full force, four, full yeah. force. Yeah. But also, but you have to have, you have to also be able to step back a little bit because for me, if I went full force, then 
I would probably ruin a lot of things or I would turn a lot of people off or I wouldn't get very far. And that was a little bit in my career is that, you know, my ex-wife would always tell me, hey, Ryan, why don't, why don't you just don't try so hard? I'm like, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what language are you speaking? Yeah, yeah. Did you just come up with some new language of not try so hard? And I, I just couldn't get it. But now I get it. It's not not try so hard. It's being a little bit more uh, specific with what you're doing, yeah. you know, a little bit more pinpointed instead of just just go. Yeah. And so that's where the older I've gotten. Yes, I have that mentality, but it's so much more pinpointed, so much more patient. Yeah. You know, um, and, 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 and so life has brought me a lot of, uh, I guess, you know, I say good times, but just uh, like a, a good setting at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah you know, Cause yeah, there's always yeah. going to be these ups and downs, but you know, you, are you, 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 the setting of your ad is, is comfortable. No bike's you know? going to work perfect in every corner no, on no, the no, track, no, no, but no. it's like, as long as you get it working yeah. in the ballpark, you know? Yeah. Cause there's nothing in life. You, you, that's what's what life is. Life is misery. Life is, you know, it's, you can't have permanency in an impermanent world. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's continually changing. So when you try to get attached to it is when you have these huge ups and downs, Yeah. you know, when you learn not to get attached to the impermanency of it and just go, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm. Then it starts to settle out and you start to be much more like linear in the middle. Mm. And then you don't get affected by stuff. And then you don't see the ups and downs. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because then it's just it's just a happening. It's just a situation. Yeah. You know, and that's where, you know, I've grown a lot from being off grid where, I mean, it's just constant, fucking constant things going wrong or issues or this or that. And you learn to just not even just roll with you the just punches. roll with it like yeah. there's a couple of things that have happened with like in my car or whatever and my friend's like doesn't that bug you i'm like oh i didn't really notice that yeah. you know what i mean because yeah. you're just so you're so um confronted with so many little challenges or so many hiccups or so many things that you thought worked and now doesn't work and whatever that you just learn to kind of be a little bit more uh I guess not tough, but just almost soft. Yeah. You know, a little like, bit more soft. Yeah. Really, because a tough is just going to fight everything. Soft is going to accept things. Yeah. So you yeah. become a little bit more soft. And then how you do anything is how you do everything. So that part of my life has really come out into other parts of my life, like relationships and, and uh, dealings with people and, yeah. and how I look at stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's been kind of cool. What's the <clears throat> off grid like for you? So what's <laughs> what, I guess, how, I mean, I know what off grid is, but yeah. in terms of like, what's, what do you, what does that mean for you in your daily life? You know? Um, well, yeah, off grid, of course you, you know, you own your own water off a well, you have your own power, which is solar, or you could do, you know, uh, windmills, whatever it is, but I have solar. Uh, you have and it own, goes to a battery. Uh, yeah, it goes to a big battery pack and all that. So, you know, you can, you know, your solar is only good as your batteries are. So, you know, I have a bunch of cell phone tower batteries yep. that I have a friend that gives them to me. So, and they, they work really well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's my way. And then also food, you know, you can have chickens, you can have vegetables, you can have fruit trees and all that. So I have fruit trees and, uh, stuff like that, but it takes a while for these things to mature. So by next year I should have a full, a full, uh, harvest, I guess. And, uh, so for me, it's, um, living off grid is not being, is not being dependent on anybody you know, not even dependent on somebody deciding that they need more money by turning up the power and turning the water. And then also being off grid is living so clean. Like my water is clean. When I go to the cities, I am blown away by the smell. Mm. When I, when I open that tap, I'm just like, Whoa, Whoa. And you know, I would it's hard to even brush your teeth mm. because again, all that. So I'm getting this clean, this clean water. Also, I'm away from the cities, which is, is just completely saturated with smart technology, 5G, Wi-Fi, all these things. And there's not at that. Do I have Wi-Fi? Yes. Do I have that? Yes. But I can turn stuff off. But there's nothing around me. It's yes. just mine, not, yeah. not one million other people. Yeah. You know, another thing that people don't realize in cities, too, is, <clears throat> is brake dust. You know, nobody's really oh, thought about dude, that. Yeah. So every time that a car hits the brakes and the brake pads are carbon fiber, there's a little bit of film that goes out. And they say that at a big major intersection, that brake dust will carry three miles out of that ma major intersection. So that's why a lot of people are having respiratory problems and different things like that. Yeah. You know, so anyways, so all that you can just you can really feel it. when you come out to my place, the the energy feels lighter. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I come in the cities, the energy feels heavier. When I come into the cities and I drink water, it feels lighter. When I come out to my place, it feels heavier. Yeah. Meaning like it's, it's, it's alive, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so with that, then there's no noise and, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, 
that's what's cool to it with me. And then also I have the freedom to be able to create anything out there. Yeah. You know, I can grow stuff. I can do this. I can build stuff. I can, you know, I got 30 acres to wander on and trails and run and train and yeah. just, you know, it's, it's cool. Now, is there a, is there a negative side to it? Yes. I mean, living alone out there, living alone off grid, that, that sometimes is, um, is nerve wracking. You know what I mean? I don't care how tough a man you are. I don't care how much you want to be. Oh, I love to be alone. You know, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get a wife to go back to you. So, you know, you're not alone. I'm yeah. talking going alone and there's not even a fucking dog there, you yeah. know, alone where there's, I mean, there's, I've gotten used to it now, but in the beginning it's like, I've, I've woken up in the middle of the night, just like, Oh my God, Oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing out here? What yeah. am I doing? I'm, I'm by myself, just like panicked. Yeah. And then you walk outside, okay, I get it. You walk outside and you realize there's no one to call because it's late. There's no one, there's n nowhere to go because you're in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? And then you kind of almost come to it like, oh, okay. Oh, huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This isn't so bad. All right. You just had to sit with it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Instead of cover it up again. So again, it's, it's not all, uh, you know, peaches and cream out there. It's, it's sometimes like, whoa, what am I doing? Because you're out there by yourself and then you separate yourself. But with that, you know, learning to be alone mm -hmm. and learning to be okay being alone you learn how to love others with not wanting anything back mm -hmm. and this is something that I've realized lately like there was a big issue with like my dog got killed in January he got ran over and he started the place with me you know <clears throat> and it was sad it was probably one of the saddest days of my life I was supposed to go on a trip with my um, my company and I had to call my partner. I'm like, dude, I can't go. I can't go. He's like, why? Because I'm crying all damn day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't stop crying. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, dude, I mean, dude, I got an armful of people have died in my family, but this just hit me, man. Yeah. And then it was scary as fuck to try to go home. There's I've something. Ne I've I'm, never been home. I was never home. Yeah. Because I started the first day you, I got there. Yeah, I got the dog there. the same day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I said, all right, bro, we're starting this. Me yeah. and you. Yeah. Me, you, and this trailer. Let's do it. And we did it. And I mean, of course, he didn't help me build, but he was my partner. No, you know? but he, I'm sure he did. Oh, yeah, sense, yeah. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So when that all happened, you know, and then I came to it, it's kind of after pondering on it, I'm like, you know what? I'm not that sad that he's gone. I'm sad that I didn't show him the love that I should have, mm. you know, because I was kind of in a place, a really hard place. And, and when I get when I get uh, unhappy, I don't want anybody around me, you know, and I'm not going to show any any happiness either. You know what I mean? And there, there's been times that it's been, like I say, really rough out there, especially from breaking my neck and being out there two weeks after a broken neck and nobody's out there with you. Neck Dude. brace on, you know, you're trying to do things. You can't, your left arm doesn't fucking work. It's just you and this dog, you know, so frustration goes out to the nearest thing. Mm. And so that, that brought me back to my ex, that brought me back to my kids, brought me back to my mom, brought me back to some other lovers I've had. And I'm just like, holy shit, man. You know, and I never showed people the love that they deserve. Mm. And so I've made that a pact with myself that the next thing, next person that comes into my life, that I'm going to show them the love that they deserve. And, and I don't know where this, why this is coming out, but I sense it because now you know that if somebody leaves, if something leaves, you're good on your own mm -hmm. because you've, you've, you've overcome that, that fear. People don't do it either. No. Dude. Like in modern, <laughs> no. in, in modern life, like yeah. you you go to school with other people you've got your family around you leave school you get a job you live in a city at not many points in your life are people completely alone like a lot of people will never even go through periods of their life where they live alone mm -hmm. you know and it's like my um my brother so i was going through with my wife we got separated through covid so we mm -hmm. we had yeah, like yeah. a real yeah. long time yeah. apart and i was living completely alone at that point and um and it was a weird alone well it was kind of a good alone in a sense though because like i couldn't see other people there was mm -hmm. no way yeah. to like have anyone else come into my life yeah and i was living alone so i did have to kind of sit there of course i had her to talk to and stuff like yeah, that but yeah, yeah it was a lot and then I think the the meditation stuff that's very you're very alone when you're mm -hmm. committed to you know spending a lot of time um meditating yep. and so my brother he ended up going through some relationship stuff and i just said i remember saying to him like bro be alone mm -hmm. like just do six months <laughs> yeah. like not many people are in the fine i think because a lot of it comes down to finances mm -hmm. you know not a lot of people are ever financially in a place where they can 
pay for everything by themselves and live complete so i think that society almost isn't set up to have that alone time but i know at least for me like those two years were some of the most formative years of my life and i know that it had a huge impact on my brother's life as well yeah and it's totally true it's like you know i've I've said some things about that is like you know everybody wants to evolve everybody wants to become more conscious everybody wants to better themselves but you know let's say they go to the gym they have a you know they have a guru they go to church they have this book you know they do ayahuasca they do all these things okay but what do they do they go right back into what has made them miserable and that's their and that's their day-to-day life you know and then once you go back into that then you're bombarded by the things that you don't want the stresses the all that entertainment that's around us Mm -hmm. that's causing us to go dull so you never have time to ponder on what you experience. Music what that, on the radio, yeah, music you, on the phone. You never have time to ponder on what you experience. So for me, I have so much time to ponder on things. I have so much time to have an inner dialogue with myself, you know, mm-hmm. and that's and that's what um, is important. It's not like, okay, hey, I want to leave my family. No, no, no. How about just maybe go to the desert for two days? Mm-hmm. Maybe go to the desert for the day just by yourself or just go somewhere by yourself where there's no people just so you have time to turn into your own senses instead of being over stimulated by exterior senses mm-hmm. coming in your radio, your this, your people, the stoplights, da, 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 da. Have you ever, have you smelt before? Have you smelt the desert? You know, you know, have you, have you watched how that sun moves and stuff like that? Have you listened to those, those birds again? Have you walked without your shoes on, on the beach or something like that? You know, have you got back to those instincts? So that's where I feel, you know, having that alone time is important. It's not having to go for six months, even just say, yeah, I live in the city and I got to work every day and I got a family, but this one day, man, this one day is my reboot. Mm. Right. And I feel that's, that's very important. And, um, you know, that's where kind of I, <clears throat> I guess, see see a change in myself, mm. right, from from being in that spot. Man, right? you, you can't not be changed by that. Like, it's such a step backwards in time, you know, yeah. like... It, well, I think, you know, because, again, society doesn't want you... Society doesn't want you to be alone. Mm. They, want, they want everybody together, but they want you to feel lonely. Mm. Because then if you feel lonely... Well, they, you need something. Mm-hmm. You need entertainment. You need food. You need them. You need, you know? Mm. So that's the thing. And that's where these things, I think, are causing everybody in this world to feel alone. Because I talk to people that have families and this and this and this and this. And I, I feel alone. I'm like, how do you feel alone? Well, you start to think about it. If you have a family, <clears throat> Johnny's over here, Sally's over here, and your wife's over here. Hey, Johnny, how was school? Good. What did you learn today? Nothing. Cool. Good conversation. Hey, yeah. babe, what's for dinner? Uh, whatever you want. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so what's the difference from just being absolutely alone? Yeah. And so, you know, I would much rather be in a situation where I'm completely, I have a, feel a little bit of alone, but around every corner, there's an opportunity, a situation, and a, a person I can talk to or even connect with, right? But if I'm in this situation where I have a family, but everybody's distracted. Yeah, disconnected. Yeah, disconnected. Well, then there's misery. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm not alone. I'm not alone, alone or lonely, but there's misery. Yeah. Yes, I'm lonely, but I have every opportunity in the world. Yeah. You know, you got in because I'm not a I'm not a desperate man. So I don't just bring things or people into my life just to cover holes up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll sit with those holes because you cover one up. Now you just gain three more and you, you never had. Yeah. You know, that's where people are. You know, you got to. Hey, hold on. <laughs> you know, you got to look at both sides before you go jumping into things. Yeah. And uh, so. So before when you it's funny, like the, the dog thing, there's such a pure form of love in a dog. Yeah. And I think that that's probably why you feel like you didn't love the dog <clears throat> enough is cuz like I don't think anybody could love a dog no. as much as a dog would love <laughs> you, you know. Yeah, so I well, think I guess that's why, dog, why that's I guess that's why dog face, is you know? I guess dog spelled backwards is god, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. Right. But what so when you you have this realization that maybe mm-hmm. I've never fully shown people love mm-hmm. and that would stem back pretty far. Like, did you kind of run the the play back far enough to see like where you think that became a part of your personality or like a part of who you were? I think right when you <clears throat> right when you start becoming something, then your ego grows very very big. Your persona grows very big. You get you get become very selfish. You have to. You can't not become the best at something and not be selfish. It's impossible. 
you know, especially motocross, man, you know? And so that's where I feel that a lot of us have this problem once we're done because we've been so selfish for so long. And there was a time that we had to push out a lot of emotion, a lot of things in life and other people handled them that we never got to kind of deal with that side. You know, those emotional sides almost never kind of got to grow up that way. Never got to truly know ourselves, love ourselves. Because again, how can you, how can you put yourself on a motorcycle every day knowing that you could fucking die? You've been injured crazy amount of times, you know, and, and your friends have been injured or died or whatever. And you get on this thing and do it over and over and over. It's almost like after a while, it's like, how could you Mm -hmm. truly love yourself? If you're putting yourself in danger all the time, how could you truly love yourself? You know what I'm saying? You love what you're doing. But if you're willing to get hurt like that and you're willing to just hurt yourself and come right back without even thinking about it, well, you got to, you almost got to separate yourself. Mm. There's, there's no other way. Yeah. And I see this when I go back now, I'm like, fuck, it's almost like a, we had to separate ourselves. Like this, this body, this body is like a, is like a, a being that, that, that I'm controlling, but we're not, you know what I mean? As I'm like trying to separate myself because you can't put emotion with motocross. You can't put emotion in there because it's so up and down and can be so, you know, um, devastating. Yeah. Right. So then when you get out of it and you say, okay, I'm done racing, it's like, okay, well, who am I? And then you never really learned how to love yourself because the only thing that you loved was this, this activity. Yeah. The only thing you loved was the person that was doing this activity, this energy yeah. that's something to wake up every day for, motivate him, challenge him, reward him, you know, even, even, even sometimes, um, you know, hurt him, you know, that those are challenges. But when that's gone, now you're kind of empty. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then, like I say, if you've never really truly turned, tuned into yourself to, to know how yourself ticks and know what, how to nurture yourself and how to soothe yourself, because everything, that every time you had a problem, motocross, anytime you're mad, motocross, anytime mad, everything just went to that. Mm. You know, everything went to that. Everything went first, even before your kids and before your wife. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, so, and then you can get caught in a trap too where you justify those behaviors because without motocross and without doing as well as you want to do, then you're not going to be able to support your family. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's quite a relatable thing between, I mean, everybody, I go through that, you know, it's like I'm busy as fuck and it's like, yeah, your wife wants a certain amount of time, they want to feel a certain Mm -hmm. way and I feel like every man would have this conundrum where it's like, hey, you're important, but I'm over here doing my shit and I'm over here working and it's like, we need this money, we need to pay for this life, we need to... And then it's like, you get caught in this weird cycle of like, well, then what are you really doing this for? Like if you're doing this thing to help your family, but then your family feels disconnected, your family feels unimportant, your family isn't feeling that love, then what are we really doing here? Yeah. And then that's, and that's the case. But the thing is, is that, you know, to be a man nowadays is very, very, very difficult, you know? And again, I don't give a shit, man. These women can say that, oh, you guys this and you guys that. No, go jump in our shoes for a sec. You know, and just like you say that we have to be compassionate, we have to be loving, we have to be supportive, we have to be this with our heart and with everything else. But then also we have to make sure there's food on the table, there's the bills are paid, this and this and this. And, 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 and you know, there's a lot of stuff that we, we got to do. <clears throat> and it's Excuse a me. fucking and, dog world. Out and then nowadays you can't say this, you can't act like this, you can't look like this, you can't be this to be a man. Now, fuck you. You know what I mean? I can get on the conversation with this all damn day, but <laughs> you know that it's, so it's, it's, it's difficult. So what you're saying, yeah, it's, it's hard to balance those things when we were designed from school to be ambitious. Mm. Us men were designed or programmed to be ambitious. I need to be better than you. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a podcast. I'm going to do one too. And I'm going to, I'm going to fucking take you down. You know, yeah. that's just our mentality. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, if you're, if you're brought up that way, well, then how are you supposed to creep in all this, this gooey, gooey love in there? Yeah. And I feel the only way to do that is, 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 is a true, you know, to maybe to have, I mean, you have to have true, true, in, you know, and you got to have a true, uh, I guess, look at yourself yeah. and look at your partner and look at that and, and go through almost relation, you know, counseling and things like that to break barriers. Yeah. The only other way is to have your world blow the fuck up. And then you got to put pieces back together. Yeah, and yeah, these pieces yeah. you put back together is a softer man, a better man, a more respectable man, a more understanding man. You know what I mean? Because yeah. your whole persona, your whole ego just got blown to pieces. At least mine did. Yeah. You know, I had nothing to pick up after my second broken neck. It was, <clears throat> I had nothing to pick up. You yeah. know what I mean? So I had almost had a, I had to start almost 
it reinventing myself with none of the broken pieces. Yeah. Cause I didn't want any of them. Yeah. I didn't want any of the old me. I wanted nothing to fucking do with me anymore. Really? Yeah. Not even close. So because <coughs> when that, when that happened and you had that neck injury, I mean like life was going pretty fucking good for you. Like it, it almost seemed like you had a bit of a, like you had obviously like a phenomenal career. Like you become like a cult icon in, in our sport. Mm hmm. And then you were having like a second, like you retired and then, you know, you were training and you were doing yeah. stuff, but it really seems like lately, like the world re-embraced what you were about and your message and yeah. the products that you put out <clears throat> and the coaching that you do. And, and then one fucking day at Washougal and it's, yeah. it's, you know, it cut you down again, you know? Yeah. And that's, um, <coughs> does that, that water's there if you need it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, yes, yes, life was, or life is good, and life was, you know, at that time, kicking ass and things, you know, popular, whatever, but it doesn't mean that you're comfortable inside yourself. Mm. Yes, I'm, 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 I, this is my perspective, and this is, this is the person that's starting to come out, but there's still this old, these old claws that are hanging on, you know? that need to be seen, need to be heard, need to be, you know, again, why is Brownie still riding? Why is Emig still racing? You know, again, to be seen. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I don't think it's that fucking fun for them, yeah. but it's because they get popularity, right? And I get it. I jumped on the same bandwagon. So <clears throat> I wasn't racing, so I broke my back 2013, two, three, four, five, six, seven, paralyzed neck down, you know, so I had to deal with that for a while and then chest down in the hospital for a good 10, 12 hours. And then I said I wasn't going to race anymore. And then I started training Noah Viney. And I said, hey, look, <clears throat> if you do, if you accomplish this, I'll race Mammoth. And really? Oh, okay. So, and he did. And so I raced Mammoth. And it was the worst fucking race of my life. I was sick as a dog. Dude, I, I'd never been so sick in my life. In what way? Like, <clears throat> just, I had like food poisoning or yeah, something. Yeah, okay. I yeah. don't know what that dude I had Montezuma's Revenge or something, man. It was <laughs> <laughs> insane. <laughs> I, the third, the second, the second day, <clears throat> I was, I stood up, I stayed up all night puking until like three in the morning, hit my head off the sink, split my head open, Fuck. you know, I was laying on the bathroom floor, just done and then <clears throat> and practices at 10. I wake up at like nine and they're like, so yeah, you know, just maybe, maybe just go get some water and go. I go, no, we're going racing. They're like, what? I go, dude, I signed up. So we roll out there. I get my, go. I get my gear on. I ride from the pit, from the parking into the thing. And my, 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 my race is on the line. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> jersey unsucked, put the goggles on outside gate and then hammered it. And, um, you know, I mean, it's vet class, so I won, but after that I had to shake. So anyways, that was like a crazy race. Then I went to Loretta's and I'm like, you know what? I just want to have fun. I just want to have fun. I don't want to challenge people. I just want to come about racing in a different way. So I rode the 86 and that was going to be bitching. The bike was bitching, but then right the day before <clears throat> the bike, uh, just grenaded. And then from there it was just problem, 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 problem. And I never got to ride it to his true potential. So that was like a big bummer. So that was the second race. Then the third race, then I got called to do this. Uh, 125 dream race. Yeah. 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 It's come up old bikes, have some fun. I'm like, okay, well that's kind of the direction I want to go, you know, to connect with fans and this and this and this, you know, not really be serious. So <clears throat> we're racing and the day was done. I'm like, dude, I am done. I'm beat. I am beat. He's like, come on, man, one more race. Yeah. You know, we're going, you know, come on. I'm like, man, I'm beat. He's like, dude, the bike, you know, there's 79s. We cruise it and it's with the, with the vets, you know, the veterans that not riders, but the uh, military vets. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, that'd be kind of cool. You know, maybe battling with them because they're on 450s. I'm on a 79 or whatever. And they see Hughes on the back. So that, <clears throat> then I got in that race and then I hit a hay bale that was in the, in the track and I crashed and the bike flipped up and I guess landed on my head and internally decapitated me. So I was laying under the bike trying to move. It's like when that happened, it's like lights went out. It wasn't a concussion. Lights went out, like lights went out, like, like life went out. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and so I kind of came to and I wiggled my way out and I got on my side and I fell back over, you know, and I got on this side and I fell back over. And then someone tried to help me up and I fell back down and I realized that I, my arm was paralyzed. My left, my left uh, leg was paralyzed and my neck was hurting. So I just said, put me on my knees. I go, go get the fucking ambulance and bring him here. I go, don't touch me. Don't move me. You know? And then I, <clears throat> excuse me. I pretty much told the, amb the ambulance guys what to do. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I have good. You need the drill. And then, so from there it was COVID. So nobody was up there with me. 
so straight to the hospital and you know we didn't know it was on and then i laid there laid there and then um they came in after they did the cat scans and everything and then just like uh mr hughes do not move a muscle and i'm like huh they're like we don't know how you're even alive you're like internally decapitated like your mind neck was like this you know what i mean and they're like yes we can fix you but you can't move like it's the hairline and i was just on my head <laughs> it didn't move man and so they put the plate in there put the screws in there <clears throat> and then i was like you isn't know, it crazy that they can fix that shit they bro. fix it like that boom and so <clears throat> they said well you know you know we are fixed you'll be good in a couple months you'll be you know 100 percent." i said oh okay so like i could go home and they're like well we wouldn't tell you to go home but you're old enough to check yourself out and if you can handle the pain then yeah so i'm like <clears throat> okay called uber <laughs> i said hey uh pick me up to pick me up in the, the bottom of the airport or the bottom of the hotel i mean sorry the hospital pick me at the bottom of the hospital they took me to the airport i had a, a wheelchair sitting there waiting for me got on the airplane the next day flew home and then <clears throat> then reality hit reality hit like once i landed i started crying like a baby man like I could not stop crying because I had to put this persona on. I had to put this role on. I had to even fool myself while I was in the hospital by myself, broken neck, nobody around, nobody can come visit me, nothing. You know what I mean? And you're you're the, your left side's paralyzed, and you're sitting there by yourself. It's scary shit, man. Fuck yeah, it's bro. It's fucking scary. Like I don't know if anybody's ever experienced it, but when you're laying on the ground paralyzed and you can't move from neck down for a while and your life is just going through your head every mistake one, you've ever made one everything time you ever one said, time did then you're laying in the hospital bed and you go chest down and your wife's right next to you and your kids and you're like dude i could be like this the rest of my life you know and then that third time you lay laying there and you don't know you don't know what's going on they're telling you what's wrong with your neck and you're like holy shit man and you might my, my whole left side might be paralyzed for uh, forever so when I got home again, it just the reality hit from being again turning that ego on, turning that persona on, turning that that almost like I said, I fool myself. I just cried, man. I cried and cried and cried. It's like I cannot believe what I just went through. Mm. I cannot believe what I just. Um, oh my God! It was, it was like it was like a different reality that I just woke up from. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because of what I had to the, the 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 mental strength and the emotional strength I had to keep myself without kind of freaking out or getting emotional. You know what I mean? And, uh, that, so then, so then that happened and, uh, you know, it, it took a while for some things to go back. Then it came back and then I'm like, okay, I'm done r racing motocross because the three motocross races I did were fucking horrible. Yeah, Sick yeah. as a dog. The bike wouldn't run and then I got paralyzed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, broke yeah. my neck. I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm done. Yeah. I, I get you. I get you. All right. I understand. <laughs> yeah. So my buddy has a uh, Africa twin and like, yeah, we'll just go cruise in the mountains. I'm like, cool. All right. Yeah. Oh man, we're having so much fun just the most amazing adventures out by my house, you know, dirt roads and roads and stuff like that. And I was coming home one day, going down Temecula Parkway and it's just stoplight, stoplight, stoplight. I'm like, you know what? I'll just go through this Walmart parking lot and then miss some of these, you know? So I go there and I take off. I look over because I needed to get gas. And then I look up and right when I looked up, a car pulled in front of me no. and it wasn't a stop sign anything. And so I kind of, he pulled like this. I saw the light. So I gassed it, you know, just because that's what you do to get out of trouble. And once I gassed it, the car hit me. And I don't know if anybody's ever been hit by a car on a motorcycle, but that noise will never, that will never leave my consciousness and ever again in my life. Because when you get hit by a car, whap, it's so loud. And you're just like flying through the air going, oh my God, I just got hit by a car. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. And then boom. Then it was out. Then it was done. And I woke up in the middle of the street with everybody laying, standing over me. And I'm looking up. They're like, you okay? You okay? I, I, I can't move. I can't move. I was paralyzed again, neck down. Right. Just laying there. And I, I can't move. I can't move. And then I just, dude, I don't know what happened. I just, I just, I willed my finger and then this finger and then this finger and this hand started doing this, you know, and I started to get up on my elbow. And I got up on my elbow and I fell back down and they're like, stay down. I'm like, no, 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 no. Thinking, because things are, the feeling was coming back. Yeah. I'm like, no, no. So then I kind of got up to my knees a little bit. I was wobbly and I fell over and then I, um, and then somebody helped me up and they helped me out and they let go and I fell back down and they're like, sir, just stay there. I'm like, no, <laughs> cause no way. I mean, I'm moving right now, so I can't stop moving. Yeah. And yeah. so it finally got there and my legs and then they sat me on the, on the, um, uh, on the curb, yeah, because after I, I, I took a step and figured I shattered my my heel, too. 
because the car hit me right there in the heel leg. And uh, so then took to the hospital. That was shattered, broken neck again. <clears throat> and then, uh, so, I mean, to, to go through that again, I mean, it, it just, it took, er- it took e- almost all the life out of me. Like, oh, oh man, my I can't even imagine. God, what did you do to yourself again? Yeah. What did you do? And now the, 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 the recovery from that laying in bed by yourself, laying out there by yourself. I think it happened in almost summer, you know, summertime, just, it was just, <laughs> it was hell, man. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I took a little seat in hell for a while. Yeah, I bet. You know, and, and to come back from that, it was mentally and emotionally just like almost, it was devastating. Yeah. You know, devastating. So it's just taking a little bit of time, a little bit of time, a little bit of time. And then, you know, that's September, then January, when my good friends, you know, Ken Block dies. <clears throat> so that was tough. You know, I have to cut strings with somebody I loved, but just didn't work, you know, relationship wise. And then my dog got killed. And then my chickens got massacred, <laughs> you know, and then I'm out there by myself, completely by myself in those like four months and just going <clears throat> like, what did I do? Mm. Like what, what? Just like stunned, stunned. Like, what did I do? Like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> like yeah. I'm getting punished, you know? So <clears throat> like the last 10 years has been, it's just been such a, just, you know, people look like you say, oh, you've been so great in this. No, dude, 10 years I've been, I've had to retire. Uh, I've got divorced. My kids have moved out. Uh, I've broken my, I've been paralyzed four times. I've compounded my femur. I broke my foot, broke my ankle. You know, my dog got killed. Um, I've started this whole place off grid by myself. You know, I've, I've took the challenge on to be out there by myself and build and build something. So then I can bring a mate in. Yeah. Would I want a relationship? hundred percent, but I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, a greedy person, you know, mm. so I'll build, I will build the garden. I will build the foundation and that person will come someday. But so that's happened in the last 10 years. You know what I mean? And also my money. Well, that's pretty much gone too. divorce and this and this and this. So, <laughs> and, and also I can't do, I can't, you know, I can't ride motocross anymore, which I'm capable of, but I just have to be kind of intelligent about it. Yeah. So, yeah. So it looks like, you know, on the outside, that life is just going great, but you don't see on the inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's not like I'm, I'm being fake by putting this personality out there. This is me. Yeah. But there's also another me that people don't it's see. It's that internal world. Yeah. That the everyone inter- has. The internal world that people don't see. Yeah. But this is, this is me. This, this, you know, this life, this kid energy is me. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Man, it's crazy <clears throat> to think that, that that's so much to go through for a person. You know, and just, yeah, to be out there, to be alone, to be going through it. It's like, you know, you, you, you question, I'm sure you've questioned every decision you've ever made, everything that you've ever done. Yeah. I've, I've questioned it all and this and that, and even, you know, thought shit, man, just be easier just to fucking get out of here. You know, that didn't last long, but the thought got, went through my head of just be easier just to shoot myself. Screw it. <laughs> you know, in these times, but you know, again, not that it lasted long. Everybody has those I thoughts. Like Every, everybody's had, had one of those that. thoughts, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. but it just is quick and it's gone, you know? Yeah. So uh, you never have to worry about that with me, <clears throat> but the, you get to those points. It's just like, why, Yeah. you know, why? And then you get to those points too, of just like, you know, unfortunately where I've gotten is that life has been so extraordinary for me mm. that normal life a lot feels very, 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 very ordinary to me. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard sometimes to find that thrill <clears throat> in life or things when you're so used to it being up here. Mm-hmm. Cause you guys know how I went about my career and how I live life. I don't, I don't have many rules, not that I break them, but just, I live by my own way, you mm-hmm. know, and people might think that's crazy. People might think that's wild, but I just think it's free. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not conditioned. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> you know, with, with that, um, you know, you start to, with all those things, you start to see this new, this new person come out, man. It's mm. just, it's like, again, it's just a softer person. It's like, I don't know if there's really anything that can make me mad anymore. Mm. Really? Uh, it's like, really, you know, and, 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 um, you know, just, you become, become, you know, become bulletproof, but, <clears throat> but with like, um, it's almost like this wall. 
it could be bulletproof, but it's very soft. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're very compassionate, you're very gentle, but you're you're bulletproof or nothing can kind of hurt you, dent you, scratch you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's a scary person in this world. Yeah. It's a very scary person. It's very intimidating to people that that they know that you cannot be affected, mm. right, by anything. Yeah. You're so true in yourself. And that's my thing is like, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't need, <coughs> excuse me, one more drink. I don't, you know, I, I feel like I don't need something to follow or I don't need, I feel like something's looking over me. Like a lot of people feel like they need like a guru or something looking over and protect them. I don't, I don't ever feel that way at all. Like I'm not scared being completely alone and feeling like I'm in this world alone and I'm leaving this world alone. That's fine. You know what I mean? It's because you, when you learn to have so much trust in yourself, mm. when you learn to have so much trust in yourself, you can relax in yourself. But if you don't have trust in yourself, then you're always trying to find ways to make yourself relax. Yeah. You know what I mean? Feel feel more at ease. And uh, so, you know, <laughs> you, you, it, you don't you never grow unless you have a challenge. You know, yeah. so all these things that I talked about, even my dad's death, all these things were, are blessings. They're okay. absolute blessings. Why? Because I saw the change in me. I saw the progression in me. I saw the the change in how I looked at people like me, myself and my ex were great friends. We love each other, you know love each other and it's because of how you handle things how you look at things and uh so you know yeah <laughs> it's would you have it would you have advice <laughs> like i recently got married would you have any would you give people marriage advice yes. from your perspective yes. like after going through what you've been through 100 percent. i'm all ears what you need to do is you want when you get married when you get in a relationship a man wants a princess a man wants an angel right just, oh, she's my little princess. Just, oh, right? Okay, well, then you need to create a garden for her. Mm. And that garden is respect, honor, compassion, an open ear, protection, you know, um, uh, motivation. Because princesses and, and angels, they don't, they don't live in hell. Mm. And us men can make life's hell mm. just by how we go about you know what I mean? And how we're down to be in hell How we sometimes. talk and this and that and how we want things. And you're supposed to give me this because I'm not happy. And, you know, and you're supposed to look like that because I want, uh, you know, I want to walk around with a trophy. All right? Dude, I'm serious. Mm. <laughs> you know? But then on the other side, every, all, win, all men, women want a king. Mm. Right? So, okay. Well, then you need to build a castle for your king. You need to support him, honor him, mm. you know, love him, uh, soothe him. Because kings don't live in prison. And women can put men in prison easy huh. by don't dress like that. Don't hang out with Johnny. You know what I mean? Why are you doing that? Oh, you think you want some of this? Well, then you better do your, your, your honeydews. <laughs> Dude, you know what I mean? Mm. So <clears throat> that's what I say is create the foundation. Create the foundation. It's like don't even call her your wife. She's not your wife. She is her name, whatever mm. her name is, right? Mm. Your thing is you respect her, honor her. Those are the roots. Everybody wants, oh, I'm married, and look, I got a girlfriend, this. Those are the leaves. But you don't honor her, respect her, love her, compa have, cherish her. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you pay attention to the roots, well, then you're, you're growing fruit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So that's to me. Is, and so I kind of had a little bit of a summer romance, too. And my thing is like, okay, well, how do I get this girl to like me, you know? And I was thinking, I'm like, well, that's kind of stupid because I'm gonna then I'm gonna try to put on a role. Mm. I'm gonna have this and I talk about that and da 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 and look at my hand. You know what I mean? Mm. And then what's she gonna give me? Oh, you know, and, and so I said, you know what? No, I'm gonna go there because we had a connection. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna love her like she's supposed to be loved. Done, mm. done, done. Yeah, done. And and it's been just like the most. I don't know. It's just like such a memorable experience. Is it going to end? Yes, it's going to end shortly, mm. you know, because we've agreed upon that. And it's going to be very hard to let somebody go. But it's hard. It's easy to let somebody go when you know you gave it your all. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's been my trouble in the past is that I've had to let people go or things things didn't go right. And I know I didn't give them my all. I mean, I know I didn't. You know what I mean? I didn't. You know, I was I was a piece of shit in, in some areas. You know what I'm saying? And so this is completely different. And uh, so that's that's something I've learned, you know, and, and also with marriage, too, is make sure you're always still boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm. You know what I mean? Always have that time to make sure you guys have the time together. 
Mm. You know, go to that little disco, go to that little bar, get away from the kids, go make sure that your whole life isn't wrapped around these kids because they will be gone one day. Mm. And when they're gone, you guys aren't going to know who you, who you are. Mm. And if the connection isn't there, you know, kind of sexually, well, I start to wander. Mm. So make sure, you know, that communication is massive, massive. You cannot be afraid to talk. Yeah. You cannot be afraid to hear the truth, but you have to listen to it with in, in a, you have to listen to it with compassion, not, not defensive. Yeah. Like objectively. Listen. Yes. Because I've, I've seen this myself now, like I've got into some, uh, situations with a girl, you know, just communication, talking this and that, you know, cause we had whatever it is. And they, <clears throat> I noticed that I handled it with much more compassion and they handled it defensively. Mm. defensive no it must have been your past or my, I'm like oh whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just I want you to hear me mm. that's all I want you to do is hear me you don't even need to say anything I don't need anything back I just want you to hear me done you know what I'm saying yeah and because again we don't need to be so damn tough man you know all these all, all this stuff on the internets and this and that oh he got to this rawr, David Goggy dude <laughs> That's still a pat and ego. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Mm. You know, if you always have to try to prove yourself, that's an ego, bro. Yeah. That's an ego. Yeah. So everybody wants to look up to the almost the biggest egos nowadays, mm. you know, and not the true man. Yeah. You know, the man that has put down the sword, the man that has compassion, the man is tough, the man that stands his ground, the man that is still working hard to be a man because to be a man nowadays you have to think different act different uh drink different you know water stuff like that eat different you got to be different because they're taking they're taking the manhood away from us a little inch bit inch. inch by inch yeah. you go around dude I'm, i was blown away in wisconsin tennessee this and i look at men they've taken the man dial down five mm. it's scary and so but now you think about it, that's becoming normal and so let's say a single man like me, <clears throat> when that's becoming normal, then women are being attracted to that type of man. Mm. So then when a real, like a, a real man comes and not like I'm a tough motherfucker, but I'm just saying, you know, the way I stand, you know, what I, how I live, a real man comes, it's almost like almost a little bit scary mm. because now we don't fit in. You know what I mean? This whole man clan, everybody wants to be man, but they're still kind of, kind of like, I don't know. Still falling in the lines, mm. and I don't know. That's just just the way I, I kind of look like, at it. I feel like uh, no. I mean, I I agree with you, and and because you know. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that way if you did if if the average American, you know, the average American uh, male body didn't have B cup tits and a little soft belly. I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're a human specimen. You are a man. Look like a man. Mm. You know, but when I see my buddies and I got little boobies and soft bellies, I'm like, that is normal. And so now women are kind of more attracted to that because the guy that's super fit is intimi intimidating, intimidating yeah. because now they got to be, yeah. you know, but their, their jeans and their loins are wanting this, that, that man, because it's instinctual to want the best mate to yeah. have the best pride, you know, the best offspring, yeah. the strongest. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So they might feel secure and all oh, this guy won't do anything in this and that, but their loins Dude, they're just like, what did you do? And so now they're never going to be satisfied. You know, I mean, it's a tricky thing, man. And not yeah. like I know everything. I'm just, the only thing that I teach, the only thing that I speak is from my experience and it's usually from fucking up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. truly. Because again, people, hey, well, what do you do? How do you live off grid? You know, how do you start? I go, just start fucking up. And then you'll start learning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how it is. <laughs> I feel like I've got a, I've got a bit of a new formula for success that I'm working with. And it's basically like how much stress can you take mm -hmm. over how long a period of time? Mm. Basically like the level of success that you'll reach in your life is equivalent to the amount of stress that you yep. can put on your back yep. and how far you can walk north with said yeah. stress yeah. on your shoulders. Yeah, you how know? heavy of a backpack can you... Yeah, can what you, can you carry? Can you... And yeah. how long for? Yeah. You know? A hundred percent. And that's, you know, that's that's life because there's never going to be a time where it's perfect. Everybody's looking, waiting for this destination and then I can. Yes. Once I get... Oh, then I can. Once I make this, then I can. Once I once I get married, then I can. Once I have this job, then I can. No, dude, now what? Yeah. No, it's not then I can. It's a now what? Yeah. Now what? Now what yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> I, uh, I had a... A, a really cool and interesting conversation with a, a friend of it, it, we both know this guy right and um and he very successful guy and he's had a 
he's had a gnarly challenging life up to this point and he's 40 he's just bought his first home he's making good money he's like life is good to him right and we were talking the other day and he said i'm kind of scared because i've been so fueled by ego Mm -hmm. but not so directly you know it was what he was saying was i was fueled by ego but what he was really saying is I was fueled because I, I did this and I was fueled because my dad was like this and I was fueled because I had this chip on my shoulder and, and he's like, now I've got this great <clears throat> life and he's like, I'm slowly starting to not feel those things yeah. that have pushed me to achieve and have pushed me. And he's looking at that now as like a, a scary kind of place to be. But in my eyes, I'm like, man, I think that's what you want to be. Like, yeah. I think you, I think you get to a point in life where you need to shed that ego because yeah. there's a point of diminishing returns. Like you can see that ego will drive you and it'll drive you. But then at some point that ego can just as easily, you know, bring you down. And it's like, you, you have to be able to shed it and then live from like, I think more what you're saying is like a place of love, a place of gratitude. And I, I feel personally in my life that I'm extremely lucky because I would do this for free yeah i love this this yeah. is great this is a i've had a shit yeah. i've had I, a fucking I, shit day i, I am <laughs> you know? and it's like yeah yeah, yeah. but i've had it i've yeah, had a yeah. fucking shit day today yeah, yeah. it's been hectic i fucking flew in at 2 a.m last night i spent mm. all day sending it to get all my office work done yeah. so that i could get here then the car fucking broke like blah 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 but it's like <clears throat> bro that's gone now yeah like I'm, mean, i love this yeah. and and i'm in a a, a lucky position where I have people come up to me, which you would have the same thing where you're like, man, you've helped me so much. Mm-hmm. Like this has been so great for me. I did this, this happened in my life. I changed this. What, what the myriad of things that you could take away from a podcast like this that has amazing people like yeah. yourself. And then it's like, I love this. I've, this fills my cup. And then I put this out into the world and then it helps other people. Yeah. And then it comes back. That then comes back. So you can kind of, I think that's the way that we want to live where it's like by serving your own interests, which I am. Mm -hmm. I'm serving my own interests by doing this. I'm actually serving the interests of others as well. And it's like, you don't need an ego for that. You don't need to be fueled by ego to yeah. live you're ne- you're in never that gonna, way. Yeah, you're never going to succeed at something competitively without an ego. Impo- For sure. Impossible. To, uh, impossible. But to a point. In, you, know, you know, yeah, to that highest level, man, you got to have ego. Yeah. There's no Michael Jordan, Kobe. Oh. You know, I mean, come on. Dude. Gnarly, <laughs> you know dude. what I mean? Come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that, it's, but also, the only way to succeed without an ego is internally, is in yourself, your own consciousness, your own way, because you can't have an ego. Because if you go to meditation and you're trying to you're trying to strip things away, strip things away, strip things away, you can't have an ego because now you're going at it competitively, mm. and you're never going to compete. Mm-hmm. You know, with your mind, mm-hmm. it's impossible. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. impossible. Yeah. You know, everybody thinks, oh, I, you know, I got control of my mind. Oh, I'll yeah. stop the thoughts. Oh, I go, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, tell me what your yeah. next thought is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, let's let's wait until you yeah, have a thought. Yeah, but they're yeah. like, I go, tell me what your next thought is. They're like, yeah, that means you have no control of your mind. Your mind is thinking you. Bro, think, 100%. Think about it. Thinking about it. You you have no idea what you, your mind's going to think next. So it's thinking you all the time. And the mind only hey. the mind only wants destination. Not many people actually know that <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> a but, lot of people don't want to admit that to yeah, themselves. Yeah, so the thing is that the mind only wants a destination. It needs an ending. Yeah. So that's like, say, let's say you meet some girl. And all of a sudden, you're, oh, yeah, man. Okay, we could this and maybe down the road. And what is that? And then maybe we can get married. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You just, this is, you, just haven't, had, here now, you haven't had coffee yet. You just, you just ruined something spontaneous because now your mind put a plan on it. Yeah. And that's the same thing as going into motocross. Everybody, let's say LA, let's say, okay, talking about Noah, just because I train him. Uh, LA is coming this weekend, right? Uh, futures. So he probably in his head is already at the podium. Yeah. I'm going to get this right. I'm already, at the, get a call already at the, Mitch. already I'm at the podium, but today's Tuesday. You know what I mean? So that's the thing is stop, stop letting your mind create stories because these stories will put pressure on you. I have to, I got to, I need to, you know what I'm saying? And then you go to this race with, with, with this story in your head 
that's already at the finish line and you haven't even pushed through, you know, you haven't even gone the first lap of practice. You've still right? got two days you, of training you're so left. Far, you're so far ahead of yourself that you're, you're not getting, you're not focused on these little things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the same thing as in life. It's like you're just creating this thing and setting, letting things come spontaneous. So, and, and I go, look in practice. I go, how good do you guys ride? We ride great. I go, yeah, because you're going there because you want to. Mm. It's fun and it's you want free. and you want to challenge and, and you want to, and you want to challenge you. There's no have to, got to, need to. Mm. Once you go to the race, all of a sudden, whoop, mind switches, have to, got to, need to, and you ride tight. So it's the same thing in life is with situations. Instead of always having a plan and always trying to figure it out and always trying to know because everybody thinks they need to fucking know everything right now. No, you don't. And actually, that's, that's a, it's a, to me, it's a weakness. Mm. If you need to know everything and you need to be the smartest and you need to know more than everybody, that's a weakness. That means you are weak, mm-hmm. right? Because it's okay to not know and it's okay to, for someone else to be able to teach you something. And I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, even healthy to know so much, <laughs> you know, because then you're almost like you, you, put, you pigeonhole yeah, you, yourself. Yeah, you lock you yourself pigeonhole, down. You know, yeah, because yeah. you know too much, yeah. you know, and that's why the, the dumb fat guy is always so happy because he doesn't know anything. Mm. You know, but then the guy that's super fit and this and that and smart and this, he's dude, he's walking on eggshells because he knows too much. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, that's true. And so, you know, that's the thing. So did, try not to, you know, try not to have so much of a plan sometimes, mm. you know, it's like, yeah, I have an idea. Okay. But let, let, let that plan come together yeah. instead of being so fixated on something. And, you know, of course, it, 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 you can take that both ways. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Take that both ways. What you said before when you said that if if you, like, you have no control over your mind. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that you would have experienced living the way that you have over these last few years <laughs> is that there's no sounds, there's no one to talk to, there's nothing there's no like inputs coming at you and there's just this stream of non-stop internal dialogue yes. that just runs through your head and i think that when you i can imagine that when you're out there it would have maybe become <clears throat> like noticeable for maybe the first time in your life as noticeable as a as it was and i think that's really the secret to meditation is that you're basically just sitting there to try and notice what you just said Mm -hmm. that you don't have control you don't know what your next thought is going to be it's just a a monkey in a cage it's just a it's just a stream yeah that's just being put forth and then you 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 learn that you're not the author of those thoughts so why would you then feel things as a result of that yeah why would you let it take advantage of you so the same thing as being out there yeah you can get stuck in a thought pattern Mm -hmm. you know like say being alone oh my god i'm so alone and then just like when you woke up in the middle of the night and then you're freaking out that's an internal dialogue that's making you freak out but if you walk outside and you feel you close your eyes and you feel the ground on your feet and you pay attention to the experience that you're having now and then you look to the stars and you experience the stars and you feel the wind. Like if you pay attention to your experience, where you are in space right now, the raw data that's yeah. coming into you and not just paying, like it's it's almost <clears throat> like listening to the play that's going on in, of your thoughts because you can be in a situation like you were where like you, it's beautiful. When you would have woke up in the middle of the night freaking the fuck out, beautiful where yeah. you're at yeah. is beautiful you know it was great i mean i watched out i walked out i'm like oh holy shit yeah his stars were just glowing you know so and the 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 problem was is you weren't paying attention to that you were yeah. listening to the voice yep. that was in your head that you have no control over yeah. but we identify with that as me as mm-hmm. i and that's what the ego is and that's mm-hmm. how the ego derails that yeah. train and you know and it's, it's totally true it's like even you know, I've, I've got to the point now where, okay, when the mind starts to race, okay, okay come on, come on, come on. I've gone down the yeah, street. So right. now I just, yeah. I just, I'm sleeping and I go into meditation, you know, I just, mm-hmm. I just pay attention to my breath when I'm sleeping mm-hmm. and then my mind stops. Mm-hmm. Boom. That's all you got to do. It's really just go to your breath, go to your breath, go to your breath, go to your breath. Right. And so, yeah, going out there and, and being these places and sometimes being, you know, that, that, that mind just going on and on and on and you can't stop it. It's like, all right you know what all right fucker all right 
And I've, done I've done this. I said, all right, fucker. And I sat there. I said, okay, if we're so alone, we need to find the problem because this is just stupid. Okay. And I had an inner di dialogue with myself, like a conversation, going through everything. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's that, it's that. I dissected that. No. Okay. Oh, yep. That, that. I dissected that. Nope. Oh, well, it must have been saying it has to be that. No. I couldn't find a thing. I couldn't find a thing. And so then I just said, well, now that's just, it must just be fictitious. My mind is just making up a fucking story. Mm -hmm. Or it's passed down in my bloodline from maybe my grandpa, this and that, you know, maybe having, or dad or whatever, whatever, having abandonment things. And that, that's true. Or it's just kind of like in humans, <laughs> you know, from back in our, the dark days, you know what I mean? That when we didn't have that, because you got to think about a hundred years ago. I mean, you could be out on the plains. You could have had no telephone, no nothing, no car. No, you could be completely alone only in 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Think about that, right? So it hasn't been that much time that now we're all so, so suave, right? Mm. And um, <clears throat> so those are the times. And, and once I recognized that, then, then that kind of made a big change because then once I saw that energy come up, I could stop it. You mm -hmm. know, and so that's what it is, is most time we're just reacting off things, reaction, reaction, reaction. But once you start to kind of like say meditation, that you start to see these things, you start to see this energy, these emotions bubble up because now you're sitting there quietly. Now you start to recognize. So before it's like, it's like that guy wearing his dirty shoes and he came into your house and messed up his shoes and then he left, you know, you got all in this mindset and then two hours later you got out of it and you're like, fuck, now why was I, was I in that? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Then you start to recognize the guy starts to knock on the door. That that same thought comes on. It's kind of bothering you. Like, ah, okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Then after a while, you start to see that little fucker come up the driveway. Yeah. You know, you start to see this energy start to come up of loneliness or anger. And you're like, ah, hold on, mm. hold on. And then after a while, the guy stops coming by your house because you're not recognizing him. Yeah. And that's the same thing as in me meditation with the mind. It's like barking dogs. You know, if that dog barked for a day straight after a while... You'd, you'd stop hearing it kind of mm -hmm. right so it's the same thing as like with the mind the more and more it's noisy as hell in the beginning and that's why i don't even like to call it meditation i just like to call it hey just sit yeah yeah <laughs> oh i can't meditate well of course you can't meditate there's no possible way you can until mm -hmm. you probably do it for 15 years you know what i mean mm -hmm. or ex ex extensively but just just sit just sit and pay attention to your senses but that's i think it. yeah th that's what it is <laughs> that's that, it that's literally what it is and i think that the like why you would do it and that the like the utility of it to then put it into the like a real life context is that you just start to realize that the thoughts because the thoughts influence how you feel yeah and then how you feel what you think influences your feelings and what you feel influences <clears throat> your thoughts and then you just start getting trapped in this cycle and i think that's why by you going out living alone being off grid we're so we're we're so easily pushed around by like the inputs of the world you said yeah. it before it's like the traffic lights the radio the oh. stoplight the one and then all these things are coming at you and someone cuts you off in in trap like you don't if someone cuts you off in traffic and then the the story the thought the mm -hmm. things that you say just yeah. automatically come fuck you you fucking people yeah yeah it, where does that come from? Like, where are you in? Where's the freedom in any of this? Like, yeah, yeah. you had no freedom in that guy cutting you off. And then you had no freedom to stop going, to stop the words coming out of your yeah, mouth going, came fuck out. you, motherfucker. <laughs> he just came out and just, you know, ah, yeah. you know, so it's like... But luck luckily, you're inside your car, though. <laughs> but, uh, but that's where it's yeah. like, this is the utility of it. Yeah. Is you just realize that when, when you realize that this is the case and you just don't have the control that you think you do, then you start to be able to treat it like what you said with yeah, the, you start, the, you start the to guy with the dirty <clears throat> shoes. And then it's like, he just stops coming by. Yeah, you, start, you start to become the witness. And that's, yeah. that's when you know you've kind of progressing in life is when you've you start to see that you're witnessing things you're witnessing these emotions come up and you can you know you can work with them you you're, you're witnessing people uh be rude to you or whatever without you uh having to respond to it mm -hmm. you're witnessing life you know knock you at the knees and you didn't really you know bounce you, you you witnessed you know good things coming to you and you didn't take advantage of them right you know, instead of just reacting and, and trying to gobble and take. And that's where this whole world is. Everybody's just gobble and take. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just a bunch of greedy bastards out here, man. I mean, it's crazy. 
Hey, this sport, everybody's so damn greedy. It's insane. But society so, so think, so think, of, so think about this. Like, as you know, everything in this world, this universe, exists right now, right? Mm-hmm. No way can it not exist except right now. Mm-hmm. But our world never exists right now. Thoughts and emotions are never now. And that's how we're run by is thought and emotion. Mm. So everything exists in this world right now, but we do not ever exist right now because we're always in thought and emotion and that's future past. Yeah, exactly. You're either in the past or in the future. Yeah. So everything exists now except us because we're always in thoughts and, and, and emotion. So you're, you're always escaping. And that's the thing I read. It's like, why is everybody so afraid of right now? Why, why are we all trying to escape right now? Anytime we have five minutes, okay, what's this, you know, boom. And, uh, you know, it's like, what are we trying to escape from? Mm. What are we trying to escape from? And I feel now maybe with everybody feeling alone and anxiety and this and that, we're, we're escaping from the source more and more and more. The source, you can say spirit, you can say God, you can say whatever, mm. but that source, because we're never in the now because we're always being distracted. And the more you remove yourself from that source or the more you remove yourself from the father, the mother, whatever you want to call it, the more lonely you're going to feel mm-hmm. like an orphan. How's an orphan feel when it's taken away from mom and dad? Not amazing. Exactly. So I feel that it's kind of happening because back in my day, before these things happened, I'd go to the beach. The whole beach would be mingling. Yeah, it'd be buzzing. And the whole it's beach like would be mingling. And, now yeah, everybody's yeah. in these little fucking packs and everybody's on their little phones and everybody's afraid to say anything and everybody's afraid to move and, you know, and nobody's afraid to put sun on themselves. Everybody's afraid to go out and maybe throw a football. You know what I mean? It's just like, mm. it's a weird, it's a weird thing. So again, you see everybody's separating. Mm. And separating from now. And I don't know, just, just, that's just kind of a little something that's kind of made sense to me a little bit, because if everybody's in this little bit of an anxiety thing, then why is that, you know, but Mm. I I, think it's more of being poisoned too, I think from everything around us. Yeah. And, and so we're, we're incentivized, like I believe in capitalism. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think that capitalism isn't something that we invented. I don't think, I think that capitalism is just when you add value to somebody that mm-hmm. value is appreciated and then we're being a social animal you do something for me i do something for you i'm like okay this is a guy that i can progress with because it's easy to do things in twos and threes yeah, and yeah. you know so capitalism is <clears throat> like this i really think it's like a natural force of nature that we you know lions work together to yeah, hunt you know yeah, that's capitalism yeah. that's people coming together to you know work yeah you, you, it. Yeah, you have to have some communication yeah. or, or, or connectiveness to people yeah. or it's just going to be just it'd be like an army of ants fighting each other yeah you know not not working to yeah. make things happen is it impossible that's what's kind of happening right now and so our i don't think that i think a lot of people like say they blame capitalism and they blame and i think that's where like the whole liberal left Mm-hmm. shit's coming in is what that people like they're they're looking to that as like the the problem and like that's to blame but it's like well no this is if if i create value people are going to want to be yeah around that value you would see that there is a reason to cooperate with this person and work together but it's been taken to this crazy extreme now and i just i'm not sure how many people are aware of how passively they just ingest everything like how passively you just ingest advertisement how passively you like you can there's an app like that opal i don't know if you've heard of it there's like an app for a phone where you put in like that you it connects to your screen time on your phone and it'll tell you how many years you'll spend on your phone (laughs) you don't want to know like some people it's like 22 years holy shit yeah i'm not joking bro wow man and it's like man i'm on my phone probably like three four hours a day yeah yeah a day yeah that's fucking years and years (laughs) and yeah and it's like yeah just think of these young kids now they're probably on 10 hours a day bro for sure they're gonna get 30 years old and 15 years of their life is gonna be they're gonna be like dogs yeah half their lives to be sleeping yeah yeah, right? yeah. But just still awake, but just awake, awake sleeping, you know? So, uh, but I, I, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like people, maybe just guys like you, at least they, they shed a light on other ways to live, other ways to think, other ways to, like, I, I'm not a big escape the matrix, but like, we fucking need this shit. Like, you look at all the metrics of human life right now, yeah. like, we're doing the best we've ever no, done. Yeah. Like, we're, we're infant safe, mortality yeah, is the lowest it's yeah, ever been. Yeah, we're in the safest time ever in the human history. The only thing that's dangerous is the is what they tell you is dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Come on. It's so, but I think we we need to, I think you know, be cognizant of like there is a machine at work that is like constantly vying for your attention, constantly making yeah. you want things, constantly yep. making you buy. Th- like I'm the fucking worst, bro. I have every Apple product. <laughs> you know, I bought the fucking Apple headphones the other day, yeah. like the big ones. Because, oh, yeah. And I'm just like. You're yeah, f- what do you, what, what do you need those? You're a fucking yeah. idiot. Like you really <laughs> don't need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, so we're all victims of that. But it's like, if you really just take that second step back, like you said, just witness mm-hmm. what's, what's going on. It's like, we're being constantly pushed and prodded and pulled. And we just don't have the control over our lives that we think we do. And it's like, even when you were saying earlier in the show that, you start racing and you're winning and you could you're just competitive and it's want 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 it's like your life just ga- gathers momentum yeah, you will put ga- on a bike at it gathers as a momentum kid. and gathers gathers barnacles you know you just yeah. start carrying this huge after a while you, you have three tractor trailers full of, of just shit chaos whatever right yeah and um but you know that is another thing of, of living off grid and living the way I do is like um, you learn that you don't need much and mm. you learn you don't want much because the more you have, the more you got to take care of, the more, you, you know, the more oh, these bro. things. So like for me, there's I am not a, a consumer man at all. Mm. Zero. Like I don't buy shit. I buy food. I buy this, this, this. But I am not a consumer at all. Food. I have no obsession with food. You know what I mean? So alcohol, I have no obsession with that. Girls starting to starting to bring that back in <laughs> that's a hard one to i keep. mean i can't help it you know yeah, like, yeah. jesus christ yeah. so but what i'm saying is is living that way you start to learn because again everybody wants to be happy yeah all right well, you can't just you you there's nothing going to make you happy nobody's going to make you happy you have to become happy but how do you there's like a little scenario for me one you got to have simplicity Simplicity of lifestyle, simplicity of mind, simplicity of bills, simplicity of all, everything. Because once you have simplicity, what does that give you? That gives you freedom, freedom, freedom to be able to think, act, do this and that. And once you can have freedom to act, do and things like that, what are you doing? You're being creative. Mm. And I've never seen an unhappy creative person. Yeah. Right. So we are all supposed to be creative. That's the whole thing. We were born one of a kind. Nature does not make. Uh, duplicates. duplicates it yeah. makes masterpieces so but here comes mom here comes dad grandma grandpa friends religion school society and all of a sudden you're a damn duplicate again yeah right so and a duplicate can never be creative you know so a, a masterpiece is creative so i feel that we all need to be creative and we all need to be a little bit more juicier and it's not and it's not me having this different lifestyle or this new way or no dude my it, i just live very Simple. simple yeah and i think very logically yeah done you know i don't take people to, to the moon or to mars or to pluto and then bring them back it's black and white how it should be no should, there's really no arguments because you can't argue with argue with facts and truths and then when you live that way it, it looks it looks different because it's not chaotic mm. you know what i'm saying yeah. it's 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 you know people think oh rhino's crazy <laughs> Why don't you come just live with me for a little bit? And I think you would see a, you, you'd probably find that you're, you're, you, you are crazy Yeah. because society's crazy and you fit in with society. Well, guess what? You're fucking crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think too, like in the same way, like for everything that's, that you can say about an individual in the way that things are imposed on you and then you're reacting and you don't really have the freedom that you think you do to react to those to everything's input output input output something comes in there's a unconscious reaction for few people for for some people there's a conscious reaction but even that conscious reaction like why did you think x instead of y yeah you didn't choose the thing that you thought before you thought it you know so it's like if that's on an individual level I, i i also think the same for society society is reacting to these things like oh, yeah. the war on ukraine the russian just, yeah, just, it's like just react so but so that is imposed on america mm-hmm. and now you have wouldn't have thought about ukraine or russia at any point 
for fuck how long before this happened you know when was your last thought about russia (laughs) and then this thing happens and then you're forced to think about it and it's like society in the same way that an individual is just pushed and pulled and you know you've got these inputs and outputs and you maybe you have control over the way you react maybe you don't i think that in the same way that you can say that about an individual i think that you can say that about society as well but i think in the same way that we would think that I'm the master of my mind, I'm the master of my world, I'm the master of my destiny. We think that about society. Well, mm. society is the master. There's mm. a master plan. And it's just like, I don't believe that to be true. No, it's man- all <laughs> just this fuck fest of this universal <laughs> ebbing and flowing. And it's like, yeah. all you can really do is just witness the thing that is <clears throat> happening in the moment. And then, you know, and that's and that's the thing too. Is we went back to you know capitalism and this and that. It's like uh, you can put any name with it. You can put Toyota on it, whatever. But it's the people. Yeah. It's the people that are causing the issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the people that are causing it. So this that's is what. The, that's it's the not government. that we don't need to go left. We don't need to go right. We don't need to go blue. We don't need to go red. We need to fix the fucking people. A hundred percent. So then we so then we can actually communicate. We can actually talk together. But that's never going to happen, man. It's never going to happen. This world does never see that. I'm sorry. It'll blow itself up before it's going to happen. It's impossible. It's too dirty. It's too corrupt. It's too lost. It's too uh, <clears throat> deceitful, mm. you know. And so that's why I just kind of that's why I live where I live, and I just sit up on the hill, and I'm that bull that uh, with the young bull, you know. The young bull's like, hey, let's run down there and have you know do with one of those cows. I'm the old bull going, no, no, let's walk down there. And we'll have sex with them all. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, when what what stopped you from knowing this sooner in your life do you think like you know you were the the periods where you know you said you went through the divorce and those sorts of things where you like you didn't have because it's almost like you just have extra tools in the toolbox after going through the things that you've been through and it's like you know maybe you only ever had a hammer like yeah, the way yeah, that you yeah, were, yeah. the yeah. way that you were brought up, the things that happened earlier in your life. Yeah, that, I think I, know, I think I just had some duct tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it, you, man. But but that's that's a reality. Yeah. You know, some people, the way where you're born, who your parents are, the time that you're in, the, yeah. the town you grew up in, like that, you just might not have been given the tools to succeed. Yeah, and that's the same way as I go with motocross too. Is like when I teach my riders, I say, look, you guys are going to a war with a with a knife. I go, I'm going to give you guys a fucking arsenal. Mm. You know, I want to teach you guys how to ride sand, mud, this, stand up, sit down, high gear, no break, da, 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 da. So anything that comes up in a race, anything comes up in a track, you have an answer for it. You have a tool, you have a weapon. Mm. And that's the same thing in life, you know, is, is having a good arsenal because of how open your mind is, uh, maybe the experiences that you've had to go through or the struggles that you've pulled yourself out of, right? And so <clears throat> whatever it is, that's, that's kind of like you say, having a good tool belt. And when you do that, then things that are coming around, you have an answer for. Just like MotoGP, okay? Danny Pedroza. Well, why can he do that? Because it's experience. He has a, he has a fucking, he has an armored tank of stuff, mm. right? So again, you don't have to be the fastest guy. You don't have to be this and this and this. You just have to have that wisdom of knowing when did this, when did that. Hold on. Oh, this kid's this kid's going fast. Okay, just let him know he's getting a little wild. We'll just sit here for a sec, you know. But a young person, let's say Deegan, because he's young and he's ready to go and he can win and this and that. Ah, he's just gonna go, right? Where someone, let's say like a hunter, he's just a little bit more patient because he's been there for a while. He's seen more shit. Yeah, he's seen more shit. You know, same same a boxer. You know, a boxer with the mm. young guys just gonna kind of okay, hold on, I've seen this, I've seen this. Let me let me let me work it. Oh, this young guy's kicking his ass like more, uh, Floyd. Yeah. You know, Floyd will sit there and sit there, sit there. Give okay. away the first. Okay, four okay, rounds. okay. Oh, now I know what you're doing. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and that's kind of kind of life, you know, but. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's a journey, man, and everybody has everybody has their own journey. You know, there there there's fate and there's and there's will. You know, you want to will things yeah. to happen. And there's also side of fate where you just gotta let it happen. Yeah, you just gotta allow it. You yeah. know, sit there and allow it. So, uh, but yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, let's switch gears and uh, maybe some motocross stuff or whatever. Because I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if everybody just wants to hear about people love this shit, bro. Oh, do they? Yeah, fuck okay, yeah. Okay, well then we'll keep people, talking. People, I don't care. people fucking love riding, <laughs> bro. I don't know well, I guess that. I guess it's just <clears throat> I mean. I I just don't, I guess I don't know the things that happened early in your life that Mm. made you, you like, I'm interested. Like I love, I love the dude you are now. Like I really enjoy any time that we get together, you know, 
it, it's a you're a unique and a very cool individual it's like Thank what you. happened <laughs> what uh, happened? you know you what i mean like you were such what a happened? dick no. <laughs> no, 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 no. what <laughs> happened early like because yeah. i i you know i've spent a lot of time looking at the things that happened yeah. in my past that created personality traits that are great and yeah. not so great and yeah. you know so it's like do you, with the the time that you've put in like when you look back like what were the what were the things that shaped that person and then that person that you you know like you said that had the marriage failure and that that was so competitive and so ego driven that there was something that created that dude and mm-hmm. then there was the injuries and the 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 living alone and everything that you've been through that created like this guy yeah, so yeah. it's like when you go back what do you think about those early <clears throat> years um i would just say the early years i was just you know some people are just born a certain way yeah and I'm, I'm just born this way i don't have to i don't have to get myself out of bed every day yeah i just get out of bed i don't have to will myself to heal i just fucking heal i don't have to convince myself to be motivated i'm just motivated I don't have to try to be happy. I'm just joyful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just this is just natural for me. So to have that to have that uh, you know that 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 I guess that uh, focus or whatever that's happened from the get go. Because when I played soccer, even when I was a kid, I'm gonna be a professional soccer player. Mm. Then I played football because I could hit people and not get in trouble. You know, oh, I'm gonna be a professional football player. Then I found motocross. Ooh, I'm gonna be a professional motocrosser. That that's because that's it. It's just I put something in my mind done get out of my way move over i'm this is what i'm gonna do and it's, it's pretty simple because i love the process mm. i'm not focused on the destination never focused on the destination i'm always focused on the process because i love the process i love the roads mm. you know <clears throat> it's even like with a woman you know it's not about just i like i like the build-up you know i like the anticipation i like the the waiting mm. you know what i mean not the final act of just having sex you know, I mean, come yeah. on. So that whole thing is this fun to me is the process of becoming a champion, a, a process uh, to building, you know, an off grid thing, whatever it is. It's just that that's kind of my way is not always just stuck on the destination because uh, you, you'll, you'll miss a lot in life when you're always stuck on that. Well, I think the the thing to think about there as well is like, so you, let's say winning a championship. Yeah. You holding a number one plate on the podium, <clears throat> the fucking AMA dude gives yeah. you the plate. That lasts five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like if if you can't enjoy the process, mm-hmm. that takes years. Yeah. Like Hunter Lawrence won his first championship this year. Yeah. At 20 something years old. Yeah. He's been riding and trying for that <laughs> since he was five. Yeah, yeah. So it's like there's a 20 year process to your to your point yeah and it's like if you don't enjoy that process if you're not going to be happy until you get on the podium for hunter that took 20 years yeah so it's like are you suffering for 20 years to have that two minutes of pleasure while you're on the podium having the number one plate and then and then you leave and then you have to race next weekend yeah and then there's a new series and then there's a three round (laughs) smx and then there's a it's just constantly constantly going you know so i think that that there's so much wisdom in what you're saying yeah i think you know the thing is is that um ah shit i had i know i was on something i was gonna say but uh about the process yeah about the process um Ah shit! Oh well. That's usually, right. Usually I'm, um, but whatever. No, it um, happens. Yeah, I kind of lost train of thought there. It'll, but yeah, it'll I think back in. So, but there was nothing you think that like was you. What was your relationship I, like? I, with, yeah. So I guess the biggest thing is my relationship with my parents were great. You know what I mean? I got everything. Just yeah. I don't. <clears throat> so I think from 15 years old, you know, when I was younger, of course, being a little little jerk, or whatever. But from 15 years old, I've never had an never myself and my mom have never raised her voice at each other, ever ever you know what I mean so that made a great relationship like my son I've maybe had two arguments with him in my whole life mm. my daughter maybe two my whole life you know what I mean so I'm not that way I'm very <clears throat> I'm a very uh, understanding person but I'm a very ferocious person I think uh, <clears throat> just being I was born very aggressive you know I like to I, when I was younger I like to fight everybody and just, mm. you know, I was just aggressive you know and then my dad died when I was 21 and that I think uh you know, put a big dent in me because, um, you know, he died in the beginning of the year. So I couldn't really mourn him because I had to race the whole year. And I was the guy who picked to win the chief championships, mm. you know? So it was, uh, 1994 
And I remember, um, you know, I was sitting in my mom and dad's house and my mom came, my mom and dad came out and they said, Hey, you know, we got something to talk to you about. I said, Oh shit. What I do now? Yes. Yeah, I'm like, good. Oh God, what I do now? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, yeah, yeah. What, what girls, what girls parents called, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three of them. Right. And they sat down and said, Hey, um, um, your dad's going to die. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, we went, my dad, your dad went to the hospital and found out that he has colon cancer and it's terminal. Mm-hmm. It's not like he might die. He's, you know, he's going to, he's going to die. And so that went really quick. And I was like three months, you know, my dad went from health to dying in three months. And, uh, and so I, it was, it was a tough time because my dad supported me the whole time. And my dad videoed every single moto I ever raced from the day I started till the day he died. Well, wow. I'm talking every moto we'd go to Ponca city qualifiers and it'd be eight motos in a day. He'd video start to finish and work on my bikes. But that's why I feel I progress so fast. I started, sure. I started racing in 1984. 9 to 11 beginner, 1988, I was 125, 250 pro, 1990, I finished fifth in my first national. So starting racing in, nine, in a 9 to 11 beginner, 80, and six years later, finishing fifth at your Hangtown National, that's fast, you know? That's <laughs> wild. Yeah, that fast. But I think it's because of me always watching these races. So so <clears throat> he was sick, and then I, he, uh, you know, I think we were, where were we at? I think we were Texas. Yeah, we were at Texas, and... Uh, I was there with my best friend and after, you know, I raced, I don't know how I did. I forget how I did. Uh, it was a pretty tough time. <clears throat> and then after the race, um, he, we got in the car and he, uh, you know, he said, Hey man, you know, there's something I gotta tell you. <laughs> oh, good man. Tight, tight, tight. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, your dad died while you were racing. So. Ah, shit you know and it's you know you're 50 years old and it's been 25 years or whatever but oh man you know, no just way not, that's not, ever you know easy. it's not having a you know it's not having a dad your whole life yeah. you know it's like i never got you know and that's the kind of thing is i never had anybody to a- ask questions to yeah I never say is this normal you know what do i do did you have to deal with this I've ne- i never you know everything that i've ever done in my life is me i've never i've never reached out to uh a a uh you know, a psychologist or, or anything like that, you know, <clears throat> all my paralyzations. I never went to PT. I've done it all myself. You know, I, I don't, I don't look for help. I, I, I can do this. You know what I mean? I can do this. I like people, you know, I need, you know, some parts of my life where need to be soothed and, and stuff like that, you know, from that feminine energy. But other than that, you know, I, I feel that, uh, yeah. The con- so that was, you know, that was, again, that was, that was tough. And again, like I was saying, I, I never got time to mourn it. And yeah. so this is why I feel that I, I deal with more of it a little bit now, yeah. you know, because now I got to, I have time to process that. Yeah. And I don't think there's ever going to be any time that, you know, something like that doesn't make you sad, you know, because I, mean? oh, no I don't think about it and it's not, not that I'm sad. It just, sometimes it just hits you, yeah. you know, and I wasn't expecting to be, be hit because I've talked about it many times, but just you know, sometimes. So that, and then also injury, you know, just injury, 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 mm. injury, injury, like I did. And it just makes you fucking tough, man. Dude, no, it, I, it, it'll, it'll cripple you like meaning to take you away or it makes you so fucking tough mm. that you're not afraid of anything, you know? And that's what it did to me, you know, pain. <laughs> really? You know, so, um, yeah, but, but it also, it softened me up, you know, cause you go back to, <clears throat> the championships and everybody's like, man, don't you bum that you didn't win a championship? I'm like, yeah, you know, I, it is. I, you know, I, I fought and I came very close to a lot of them, but just, it wasn't in my books. It wasn't in my cards, but let's say, um, Ricky Carm or Jeremy McGrath, you have to come to my house, walk in this special room to see my number one plates and all this. Okay. Well, I don't have these number one plates, but I feel I have a, probably the biggest, uh, almost the biggest trophy case of experience. Mm. And now I'm able to take this trophy case and share it. Mm. Cause back to one of every th- your other things I was going to say is that, you know, I always share because we care. Mm. If you don't care, you don't share, man. And this is why you see me sharing so much. Mm. I share my life. I share my experiences. I share my bads. I share my wisdom. I share everything that I could be making money on because I fucking care, man. Mm. I care. I think that comes across too. Yeah. To I, be I, honest. I care about the sport and I care about, I care about people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd much rather, I'd much rather die broke 
and care about people than die rich and and, and not care for a, a single person. You yeah. know what I mean? That, yeah. That's very selfish. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've been selfish in my life, you know, especially marriage and stuff like that. And I had a good marriage. You know, 24 years we were together. 24 years, man. You know? That's so gnarly. 24 years and we loved each other. It just, it just was a point that, you know, life, God, spirit wanted us to, to break apart so then we could become our true selves. Because I couldn't imagine me still being that person. Mm. And there's no way that I'd be this person if I didn't have th- that, that, that grenade put in my life and mm. just blew it up. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, the, the things that like people don't realize, like I, when I came, I came off the road. So, <clears throat> you know, this is how, this is how I work. So, uh, when we were going through all this shit and I was so pissed and I, this and that, I said, look, I go to get married to you. I said, I do today. I said, I fucking don't. And I left and I never came back. And I went on a nine week journey I went from, I did every stop for a week. I went for, and I did schools and stuff. One year I traveled 150,000 miles traveling, just doing schools. It was insane. So I went to Australia for a week, New Zealand for a week. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Spain for a week, South Africa, Bali, back to New Zealand, Argentina, and then Peru, and then flew home on Christmas. And, uh, so when I flew home, uh, we sold my house that my kids were moved out and this and that. So I went home and to get, you know, cause it was getting sold and I opened the door and it echoed. Mm. And this was one of the saddest days of my, my life. You know what I mean? And these sad days, these times is what to, was what softens me, mm. you know? So saddest day I walked through there and I went down the hallway and I looked in my daughter's room and it was fucking empty. Mm. Dude, I fell to my knees, fell to my knees, man. And just cried. It just, <laughs> it was the saddest thing because it's like, this, this, you know, I'm never, I'm probably never going to stay in the same room or same, same house with her again. Mm. You know, coming these realizations, you know, mm. it's, 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 it's tough. And, um, you know, and I think the toughest guys have the, have the softest hearts. That's yeah. why they're so fucking tough. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause they're, they're willing to, to, to accept defeat. Mm. They're willing to be punished. They're willing to be hurt. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, uh, so yeah. So some of these things, you know, uh, just, uh, sharpen you up you know harden you wisen you up a little bit and you know I, I, I think that so I'd much rather have a life of experience than a life of uh, championships mm. because someone has to come to this special room with, it probably has dust on it now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right yeah 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 so, and I think it's like I mean I'm sure you let's you know to use the Jeremy McGrath analogy it's like you win seven championships it's yeah. like what do you learn different in those seven years that that you didn't know already the year before yeah and a lot of you know I'm not gonna <clears throat> not a knock it. at Jeremy I'm not knocking like, anybody yeah. but just like this whole sport it's like these guys can't get out of that one persona that one mindset mm. I'm the racer you know, Jeremy's still the racer. Jeff Emick's still the racer. Carmichael's still the racer. Mike Brown's still, the, you know, just there's nothing like they have, they, like, and again, it's just the way they are. But I, for me, I want to be more well rounded, not just, I mean, I'd be bored to death only thinking about motocross, man. Mm. You know, I've obsessed over it for 40 years. There hasn't been a week that has gone by that I haven't worked at it and this and this and this. But there's, there's a whole different side of me, mm. you know, that, that now both of these things kind of work together, right? Yeah. I can bring the motocross toughness into you know uh, I guess my personal life and I can bring this softer more compassionate guy into the coaching Mm. which has really helped lately really helped you know what I mean having more understanding having more compassion it's not like I tried it just it just just comes out you know what I mean yeah and so again most people want to take me this way but they don't they don't hang out with me it's like that one fuckhead um uh well, he does podcasts. Oh. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna come on. You, I can't believe that, dude. I cannot believe what he put that he put something on YouTube, just belittling me. Really, belittling me, saying that I had drunk. I have mental issues. I have substance problems. I have this. I have this. I'm said. I called the guy. I said, son. I go. Have we ever met? No. I go. Have you ever hung out with me? <laughs> no. I said, then what the fuck are you you saying, man? I go, this is slander, son. You know what I mean? And so this and this and this is where I've learned that I'm evolving as a, as a, as a person and not just reacting because there's been things like this, something against our company, some, uh, you know, some personal issues with, uh, you know, relationships and stuff. And I handled every single one of them with grace. 
you know, with absolute grace. Remember the guy from Australia that was kind of talking about knee braces and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had a yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked. By the end of it, he wants he wants to fly me to Australia to do a school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I never went about it like how I would go about it by fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, da, 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 just, just trying to destroy the person, own the person, you know, this and that. I went about it in a different way, and whenever you treat anything with 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 grace, you always win. Even mm. though it's not a it's it's not a it's not a competition, but the way you win is that you don't have any regret. Mm. You don't have any residue to pick up because you said so many things and did so many things that weren't true or didn't need to be said, and now you have to you have to kind of uh, yeah, that's you gotta, the you gotta, shit that creates like yeah. scar tissue. In yeah, a way. exactly. Yeah, now yeah. you got to sweep all that shit back up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Instead of just going hey. And however that person wants to handle your grace, well, that's on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I've had some things like that where I handled with grace and they handled it ugly. And I was like, hey, that's on you. Yeah, That's yeah. on you. And yeah. now you're going to have to live with that, you know? And, you know, because, uh, but it, and again, it just makes you feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? It's a lot easier so, to walk the high road. Oh, 100%. And, but it's, it's much easier to do it, but it's hard to get on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's easy to walk it, but hard to yeah. like start on. Yeah, that. yeah. and then it's very hard to stay on it. But once you once you get on it, and you kind of, it's like you got to go up a hill to get yeah, on the high and you road. Kind of once you put your GPS on, then it's like it's 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 hard to get off it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know because you see how things have unfolded the other direction, and it's like, oh, okay, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like this. Okay, mm. you know, I'm gonna put this in this gear. All right. Not always having to fucking rev it and show that person how fast my car is, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that chick? Wah, wah, I'm revving it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I uh, actually, I need I need to say as well that the <clears throat> that podcast that we did the first time, mm -hmm. I think it was 2020, like it. I mean, that was like, it's like a life changing thing for me. Really? In a, in a way. Well, I mean, it just kickstarted so yeah, much yeah. that I. When you messaged me and you, I've, I've told the story before, but I don't know if I've ever told it to you, but know. you know, I was, we, I mean, we were doing, we, everything was going good. Um, but then when you talked about being on the show and then you said you didn't have Wi-Fi, and then it just, <laughs> a, a light switch went off in my head that I could set something up. Oh you, yeah, you know yeah I, I got you. I got and you. I, I'd never, you were the catalyst. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. That, the, you know? When we did it, you yeah, were in Australia, yeah, I was here. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. So you were the catalyst for that oh, that's cool. and uh and then i could if, if i got asked a question the other day i was doing a like a interview with a, mm -hmm. a guy and um yeah he just said like has there been any points in this whole thing where it was like a and that that show with you was one of those points you know yeah. like it's quite hard to identify because it's been five yeah. years of yeah, work yeah. and then it's 10 but years you can of work see where that. something kind of made a little bit of a jump yeah. or just took you in a different avenue yeah. or, or opened up your mind yeah. completely yeah. 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 It, it, it really did and then that was i mean i think it I think the episode from memory did like 250,000 downloads in like the first few days wow. just on the audio yeah. and then all those clips, like it just, it, it went crazy and it sort of started like this, this, <laughs> this thing. And I, I, That's cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Still and I, I just, I, I don't know why I popped in my head then and I was yeah, like, yeah. fuck, I need to say this before we actually, <laughs> before I, before yes. I forget. That's but, cool. But it was, it was really cool to, you know, like you, you say the way that you, are in the sport and the way that you carry yourself it is very unique and it might not be everyone's cup of tea mm -hmm. but i mean it fucking hits man like it really you know you do say things that you know whatever people may think about you like there really is some like wisdom and truth and you can feel that you it's coming from a good place and you can feel that for you know rough around the edges or whatever you want to say like that's coming from like a person yeah. that really cares and you're not saying take knee braces off because you fucking hate the knee brace companies no, you're or, not. or or have a or have a company that you can buy these from yeah yeah no i've never made a single penny on any of this anything yeah, and yeah. that and that's the thing is that um you know again it's it's sharing because you're caring and um um yeah. And again, if I was trying to be somebody, then you'd see, you'd see me work real hard to be perfect, mm -hmm. but I try to mess up as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I want to show that to people. I want to show that you don't need to be perfect to be, to be, to be spot on or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be all buttoned up. You don't have to fit in. Just be you. 
And the more you can be you, the more unique you're going to be. And everybody's interested in someone unique because mm -hmm. everybody's becoming stale now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no more juice. No, you look around. Human beings aren't juicy. Mm -hmm. They're all they're all stale, right? That's why I have such a hard time finding women because they're all stale now. Mm -hmm. You know, they all have, you know, bought into the the this look. You know, these lips, the yoga pants. I mean, I went to the, I went to lunch here. I went to lunch here, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking. You know, and I'm, I look completely different than any fucking guy around here. You know, <laughs> you know, especially I think Laguna Niguel, or whatever it was. And I'm I'm sitting there, and I'm eating, and yoga pants, yoga pants, yoga pants, yoga pants, yoga pants. I'm like, eh. give me something. Different. I'm like, dude, yeah. that's why this this little girl from Tennessee. It's just like fucking completely different. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so she's juicy. Yeah. And that's what a juicy with 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 uh, creativity, you know, with uniqueness. I love uniqueness. That's and if I go shopping, that's how I shop. I just look at the store and if something unique pops out, that's what that's what is, is my interest. But I love uniqueness. If you're not unique and if it's not unique, then fuck, I, I resonate with that. Yeah, it has to lot, be, dude. dude. It has to be because I have a, a very artistic eye. So I love things that are are different. And I guess, you know, that's what how your eye is, how your ear is, how you, everything else is, is how you're going to kind of become too. Because, you know, if you see something very unique, well, you can't help but not be unique or mm. something that way. If that, make, if that makes yeah, sense. Because yeah, no, no. yeah. again, we're just product of our environments, how we eat, drink, think, who we hang around, what we listen to, what we read is just becoming us. Yeah. Right. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that you're fully concentrated and focus on that first ingredient, which is you. Mm. Because there's so many different thoughts, emotions, likes, dislikes, everything that comes from the seed. And so if you're paying attention to this seed, which is you, you're the first ingredient in feeding it organic material, meaning good thoughts, good this, good that. Well, then everything that comes you comes from you is going to benefit. It can't not. Mm -hmm. But if you're not paying attention to that first ingredient, which is you, and it's getting fed, you know, uh, improper nutrients, meaning porn, you know, this, that, drinking every night, hanging out with stupid people. Well, then everything that comes from you is going to be diminished mm. because you're not energy, you're, you're not, poisoning ener you're not well. energetic, you're not clear, you're not creative, you're not uh, compassionate, you don't have excess, you know, everything's just, oh, you're just rushing to get shit done. And when you aren't that way, you have so much more time to things. And so that's why routines in the morning are so important to me mm. because it gives me two hours or whatever it is to whoops, focus into my own mind, work on issues that I have, figure out things that I have, not get distracted by stuff. So then when I so I fill myself up, I fill myself up with energy. I fill myself up with, uh, you know, with with with, uh, I guess, you know, being being clear because you have time to throw all these things out and so when you get come into life then you if you're overflowing you have so much more to give but if your cup's empty you're trying to get home so quick so you can fucking drink mm. not drink alcohol but just get a drink meaning mm. to refill Fill yourself up, up yeah. right yeah and so that's why morning routines i feel are so important for people to get them in this uh in this kind of rhythm what right? is what is your morning routine these days um so I, i'll get up probably five thirty six ish you know i used to get up super early. do you get up with an alarm or no, no alarm? never yeah, yeah. never never i never set alarms i don't have a computer i don't write anything down yeah i remember everything <clears throat> unless don't want to <laughs> where were you last night I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. But it sure smelled. You smell like perfume. Where were you? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I usually get up 536. I used to get up really early just because I was just so gnarly, you know. Oh, yeah, I'll get, 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 get up before everybody else. And, 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 and No, nah, fuck. So I get 536 and I make a green drink. So my green what drink. Do you, what do you use? Uh, blender. I'll put garlic. I'll put ginger. Um uh, parsley, cilantro, uh, celery, lemon, apple cider vinegar, and olive oil. Yep. And I mix it up. Okay. And then I drink that through the day. And dude, whew, I'm talking all your inflammation, yeah. all your parasites, everything, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, anti, you know, it's, it, it, it helps. It and does, man. It's unbelievable, dude. And so what I see in my stomach now, how I feel, my skin, dude. I have zero pain in my body from all the injuries, 26 broken bones and surgeries and all this shit. I don't have any pain. Yeah. I run every day, you know, 
and 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 stuff like that so this one drink that so then from there i get in my ice bath i get an ice bath first because it's you know a little bit tougher to get in that and then straight from there into my sauna so i'll shock myself in the ice <gasps> And then I'll get into the sauna, which is very soothing, you mm. know, and has almost like the same vibrational frequencies as a, as a, as a mother's womb. So it's very soothing. So sometimes I have emo, you know, I get a little bit bummed out or sad or whatever it is, you know, cause we're humans. When I get into that, it just like, like you feel it just disappear. So from there I get off that, get a little sweat going, go outside, shorts on, shoes on. And then I go for my run, I run my trails and I have a couple different spots on my trail that I do different exercises. So this one, I'll do some push-ups over here against mm. this rock. I do some dips on this rock. I have, it's perfect for stretching my legs in a certain way. Up top of this hill, I do some, um, <clears throat> some yoga, run back down to this side of the trail and then I have a pull-up bar. I run over here to these rocks and I have some rocks that maybe I lift or do push-ups, you know? And then I come home, do a little, yeah, I do a little kettlebell swing, stuff like that, work on some little issues in my body to, uh, just hip stuff because injuries uh then then i take a shower make some food and done gone that's so sick done gone i do that every day yeah every day yeah you know what i mean and again my run it's not you know sometimes my run is only 10 minutes that's that's all i feel like i want to do i don't i don't train to be fit yeah. i don't train to be anything i don't train to be better anyway. feeling. i train to feel good yeah and my training is relaxing and people are like, how do you relax training? Well, you got to do it the right way. Mm. You just don't, you, you know, you come to a point where you're breathing, you know, you get to your breath to a certain point where, okay, that's it. Okay, now you sit there and you stretch, mm -hmm. you know, or you feel your breath. Like you'll be amazed next time you do something that causes you to get your breath high, try to allow your breath to breathe itself and you will recover like that. Mm. But when you're trying to control your breath to recover, it takes twice as long. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah. Like I'll run the top of the hill, do these things, and I'll sit, you know, and squat down and just feel my breath and I'll f feel it. And all of a sudden, boom, it's gone because I'm letting it breathe itself, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And things like that. So, um, yeah, so it's just different because I don't have anything to compete against. I don't care to be better than anybody. Yeah. Yeah, it's just purely feeling. Yeah, yeah I like to feel good. <laughs> we um the the podcast is sponsored by AG One. Have you ever heard of a Athletic Greens AG One? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll actually, I'd like to send you some. Like, I'd actually love to get yeah. your thoughts on that because I've been using it for like over a year. Okay. And man, the biggest thing I noticed, bro, here would get so bloated. Like Up just there, just underneath, yeah. like my. Uh, like your rib cage, like that yeah. first kind of ab area, mm -hmm. that's where I would be bloated. Hmm. And when I started taking that shit every day, just that bloating was gone, man. Yeah. And like my, I used to, I've done, a, I've, it's actually cool. Like this year, because I'm doing World Vets on mm -hmm. the 5th of November. Yep. And um, I've taken a pretty, I haven't trained for a motocross race yep. like properly ever. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. All my boys <laughs> are flying over <laughs> yeah. from Australia. Like my family's like... Well, it's just a thing we're all going to do yeah. as a crew. Nice. It's been amazing. Like we've had this really cool group chat. I've got my buddy, Azza. He's one of my best mates, my brother. And then one of our other best mates, mm -hmm. Sawley. <clears throat> Franco's coming over to mechanic. My dad's coming over. Nice. So it's been, it's been really, really cool. But it's really been such a, a, a cool experience of like I'm trying to get healthy. I'm yeah. trying to. Yeah. And I've been on this process over the last, I mean, it feels like a lifetime, but it really feels like lately it's kind of, I'm starting to feel the results and I'm starting to like really feel the difference from like the compounding effect of <laughs> yeah. it. You know? well, it, it. Everything takes time. You know, everything takes time. Nature, there's nothing, you, nature, it takes it's not its quick. sweet ass time. Yeah. So it's the same with us to gain a muscle takes time. You know what I mean? Actually to lose stuff, takes less time quick yeah. you know so with that is being consistent is, is is very important having those greens in there especially in the morning because that's when your body usually just soaks it most up but you know people oh i take a green drink okay but now let's start looking at everything else okay yeah. so if you're a man and you're drinking beer no 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 that's the worst thing you could ever do it's a big bottle of lectins it's a big bottle of uh you know <clears throat> it's just you know estrogen Mm. that's what it is it's a big bottle of estrogen so that's why you see everybody that drinks beer they got little titties and little belly and they're just happy <laughs> right because that's what it does it softens you up so for me if you want to be a man you can't drink beer and i think sugar holy shit man how many sugar do people I they say to, that's what they I say people they bit. people the 100 grams what do they say like 100 grams or some shit 
I don't know. And we were doing the math and for a year or, or whatever oh, it was. Dude. And it was insane. Like, it would fill this room up one person. Because for me, like, even I went to had lunch. And the guy, I'm like, yeah, maybe kombucha. Oh, we make this one thing. It's like, you know, we are homemade syrup and this and this. And it's just sparkling. Okay, it's pretty clean. Okay. So I had it. Two sips. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I go, whoa. I go, man, I, I can't drink this. Well, why? I go, it's just, it's just too sweet. Yeah. You know, so anything. It's almost like, like uh, you know, if I hang out with somebody and they have a little sweet tooth. I'm like, oh, let's have a bite. I have a bite. It's almost like I, someone, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. It's like doing a sh- sh- shot of cocaine, right? Yeah. It's like, I'm like, serious. I'm like, whoa. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Like, I never knew sugar impacted you that much until you get completely away from it. Like, I don't eat any sugar. Mm. None. Maybe dark chocolate. Done. Yeah. A little bit. If that, you know. I even forget about, I even forget about sweets. Yeah. So my, you know, my, 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 my way I eat is very, very, very simple, you know. And it's probably because I live alone. But green drink in the morning, eggs, just eggs. Done. Maybe some sauerkraut, stuff like that, but just eggs. And then um, <clears throat> through the day, I'll, eat, I'll have some fruit, some dried fruit, usually protein shake. And then I have a green drink that I, that extra. So I'll sip on that through the day. Usually salmon, some salmon maybe in the afternoon. Um, maybe a little snack. And then at night, you know, I'll just have usually just meat. Mm. I'll, have, I'll have heart or I'll make up some, uh, some meat or some chicken or just a steak. And that's really about it, you know. Maybe yeah. at night I have a little bit of dark chocolate and that's it. Yeah. So that that's kind of my my way, but that's you, you eat that way, you don't create any inflammation. Yeah. You know, you eat that way, you stay very, very specimen like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, I, I'm definitely starting to feel that. You know, like, yeah. uh, and it's been a it's been over well, like almost a full year of like being fairly dialed. And I think the the other thing is like you realize that everything's in concert. Like your body is like an orchestra. Yeah. You've yeah. got you've you've got your mind, you've got your body, you've got your diet, you've got your breathing, you've got inflammation, you've got flexibility, you've got yeah. you've got your cardio, mm-hmm. you've got your heart rate variability, you've got your max heart rate. You, you know, like yeah. there's there's so much. <laughs> it's a science, it's a science project. You know? it, it it really <clears throat> is, yeah. and you know, like so, and, and I think everything kind of like links together, and I think that's why it pays to like really be holistic, and yeah. and I think you're a good example of that, and like the the greens, right? So the the greens, I think it get got rid of a lot of bloating and inflammation and through my digestion. Yeah. But then that also cleared up my sinuses. Yeah, oh yeah. And then that helped me breathe. Yeah. I I did a. Uh, have you done, have you done much psychedelics? Like, have you does that mean anything that's like helped you? Do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've dabbled in, you know, of course, you know me, I've, I've dabbled in, you know, a bit of stuff and, uh, you know, I've done, you know, DMT, done ayahuasca, I've oh, done, wow. mush, done mushrooms. I've done that again. Cause I'm a guy that you want the I, I, want, I want to experience stuff yeah. now yeah. <clears throat> do what I do DMT again. No, don't, yeah. don't need it. I've yeah. done it. And you know, I, I don't really, would I do these things again? Eh, not, not necessarily. You, you got the thing yeah, that you kinda, to I kind of got what I got, yeah, and it's yeah. not like you're going to teach me anything else. And you got to be very careful with these things because they put you into some, you know, some uh, utopia. That, mm. Oh my God, I've made it. I'm fixed. Mm. I'm new. And then you go back into your life, and life goes, hold on, let me test you real quick and see if you did change and see if you are new. Mm. And you go backwards. And then you start to feel worse then, right? Yeah. So you got to be very careful because a lot of people think that this is the holy grail, the new way. Mm. And this, okay, take it, but now what? Yep. You're, now you're back to, to yourself again. Mm-hmm. So that's what I realize, and that's where I go through life is like, you know, I get bored or I get, <clears throat> you know, lonely or whatever. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go find a girl and hang out with her. But then I'm right back to my spot. It's oh, just yeah. a treadmill. Yeah, okay, dude, You're you know what? I, I'm bored. I'm going to go hang out with the boys, maybe go have some tequila, this and that. Yeah, but fuck, man. I'm right back to where I yeah, was. Yeah, where you running from? Okay, man, you know what? I'm going to start this podcast. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, but... You're still right. You know, you still, again, I always just hey, bring, what I always do they bring say? everywhere you go. There you are. Yeah, exactly. So once you start to realize that, then you stop chasing this, this ghost. Yeah. You know, you stop, you stop chasing. And that's the biggest thing with me is I'm just done chasing life. Yeah. You know, I'm done chasing it. Yeah. And, and it's a fucking good feeling. Yeah. It really is because I've chased it till you can't, I, it, it I, you couldn't chase yeah, it. Yeah, you looked everywhere. Oh my God, yeah. I've done it. I've, I've looked at every rock, every waterfall. I've I've chased it all. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Because I want I want to leave this world without a regret. 
of mm. not experiencing it. You know what I mean? I couldn't imagine going through this world and not not experiencing it like it should be experienced. Because to me, <clears throat> if this way I look at it, <clears throat> if you look at nature and you don't bring anything to it, no tools, nothing like that, you don't take anything away from it, no material, whatever, what can you do with it? One, you can ponder on it and its magic and its beauty. But two, if I go body surf on a wave and I throw a rock and I swing from a vine and I make a sandcastle and I, what am I doing? Playing. Mm. The only thing you can really do with it is ponder on it and play with it. <laughs> so that just shows me that we're here to play, that God made this place to play. And it's almost like when I watch, it's like, you know, God, spirit, whatever, had an idea, created it, and now wants to play with it, but playing it, playing with it through us, mm. right? And so when I watched my, when my little daughter, when she was younger, play, it was almost the same damn thing. Mm. You know, she had an idea. She put all 10 dollies up. Every dolly had a name. Every dolly, you know, one was, in, one, one was in trouble yeah. and one yeah. was this, this, and this, always the bad one, you know, and then all of a sudden she'd just take off and then all of a sudden she'd come back and start the narrative right up again. And it was just, it was kind of almost like the same thing. It's like they so created, you know, they had this idea, they created it, then they played with it and she would play with her friends and they'd be fighting all, you know, kind of all day and then they'd leave and then she'd like, daddy, can Sally come over? I'm like, you just were fighting with her all day. Yeah, but we're best friends. I'm like, hmm. It's kind of like, you know, to me, spirit, God, whatever. It's like, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you do down here. Just come back and play with me. Mm-hmm. Come on, just come back and play. It's almost like a child. Why does everybody look at God or whatever as such a man, a woman, a, you know, a force of this? Why, why can't it just be play? You mm-hmm. know, wh- where's all the religion with play? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's what I feel because my, if you if I read, you know, human design, this and that, and it says, you came down here to, to play and relax or pretty much enjoy and relax. That's mm. it. And I, and I, I really, truly believe that. But, I've only, but I've only can, come down here to, to enjoy and relax. But, and you can enjoy hard things. That's not to say that, like, if you took that statement on its face, you could be confused to thinking that you shouldn't work hard. You no, shouldn't. You, no, 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 no. But you can enjoy hard work. Yes. You can enjoy and, everything. And that's, that's what I miss the most with motocross is mm. that absolute dedicated, <laughs> just like focus. Like every, you wake up, it's for motocross. You eat, you sleep, you do your appointments. Everything in your around your family is based on you. You know, everything you do is based on this one fucking idea. It's so simple. Oh man, it I, is so simple, but it, man, it's so addicting to me because I love being in that mind state. I completely because get I, it. I go silent. Yeah, you know, I go silent. That's why motocross is always good for me, and that's why I always rode so hard, so fast because I'm only silent at the edge. Mm. I'm the only sign that's when I go silent and it's so it's like peaceful mm-hmm. you know yeah because other than that if I'm not on the edge then my mind will wander because it's so it's kind of it's easy you mm-hmm. know that I, when I like when I'm driving down the road and I have to do the speed limit <laughs> dude yeah. I'm like but when I'm kicking ass man dude I'm right yeah 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 that's why I drive that's why I drive fast you want me to pay attention you better let me drive fast <laughs> yeah 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 no no it, yeah I think you, you're so right and yeah. it's funny like so to to go back to the the mushrooms thing and like <clears throat> you can have these experience like so I had an experience on mushrooms where like it just fully took me into breathing yeah I'd never in my life paid attention to breathing in the way that this mm, for- yeah, yeah, yeah. forced me like i took a like it was a big <laughs> hero dose yeah it was like a big i used to like every few months mm-hmm. like maybe like six months i'd yeah. get like a big dose mm-hmm. and i'd put some music on in my room yeah the lights would be down and it, this wasn't like a party thing this yeah, was like, like a, yeah. i'm fucking going in yeah i'm going to see if i can find something see yeah. what see what see what's up yeah. and if i can take something away i take it away if i can't i just yeah you know what i mean but i went in and I just for fuck bro I felt like five six hours I was just breathing yeah. I could just feel up yeah down up down and man I contemplated breath <laughs> for five hours <laughs> like it was fucking intense but it never yeah. like when you say like you get what you get and then you take it yeah, back to yeah, you yeah. like it and that started a you know even a whole another thing of like just do i even know how to breathe properly <laughs> yeah, does no, anybody don't. does no, anyone we don't. know how to breathe we don't properly? because we're breathing out of stress we're breathing out of fear we're breathing because if you watch a baby it breathes from his stomach you watch a hu- you watch an adult it breathes from his chest because yeah. where did we go we went to our head they're still in instinct 
we're st- we're we're in thought you know what i mean so our breathing is going to follow and so that's why you know we're up there but yeah it's uh you know i've had some <clears throat> yeah i've had some experiences and some great ones you know just like the the love i felt was like Mm. to my toes yeah but then the fear i st- the fear i experienced was like and was that on dmt i, I had to call out for help the, was that on yeah. dmt the yeah. Fear? yeah i yeah, haven't yeah. done that yeah that was uh that was that a was lot. something that, the first time i did it it was just like okay you know you gotta hold as long as you can and then then you almost like disappear because dmt is almost like having a near-death experience without the incident right because mm. everything in this world has dmt in it and when you get to that experience your blood your brain gets flooded with dmt and that's why you see all these lights and everything and like the, the cli- world the cli- goes the away yeah. 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 yeah and so that's the thing you know you go woof, and you just you see this kaleidoscope of lights and there's just love you know what i mean but then you know then there's little tests in there too that you have to you know, uh, kind of uh, be okay. So psychedelics, is, is, is it the answer? No. Is I, it, I agree. It, it's not the answer. No way. And so anybody listening to this, please don't just go, oh, Rhino, no, I don't give a fuck. Don't, don't, don't listen to anything I say. Please, you make your own decisions. Is it, it can it give you a, a signpost? Can it give you, you know, a, a kind of a signpost like that? Yes, it can. But it's not, it's not the, the you know, the, the true answer i guess mm. right it, it can help yeah but it's not you know too many people just get stuck on these things and just keep doing them and doing them and doing them. they almost lose, lose Dude, themselves. I've seen people they almost lose it. them they lose yeah. themselves you know yeah. so you have to be very aware with what you're doing you have to use not abuse you have to honor respect because things are here for a reason or they wouldn't be here mm. nothing's here by accident i don't give a shit from heroin to cocaine to everything it's here for a reason this man made it dangerous yeah. but the opiate plant and the cocoa plant they're here for a reason yeah you know and so uh you know with that um you know I, I i don't i don't i don't promote it i'm just for me i'm just an adventurer yeah. you know i like to adventure i like to find out what's around that corner i like to find out what's that i don't want to listen to what this person said yeah don't do this ryan because of this Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm gonna find out for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but the, um, it, it's so I, I've had an experience of that love that you yeah. spoke of, and that was MDMA, and that was yeah. dude. It was mm. fucking the most. I've spoke about it on you yeah, before, but it, <laughs> it was the most like. I don't want to talk about my <laughs> my experiences. With <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> but I, I uh, that wall would have been in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But Damn, you're looking good, dude. It was <laughs> look at uh, all those bumps on you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, it was an X game. It was like an X Games after party of all yeah. places, and I just had like a full blown like unconditional love, yeah, experience, and d- it changed me. Like oh, yeah. it, it's crazy that that I took away <clears throat> from that something that never left. Like the the availability of like what love. I actually, you know, you know <laughs> what I mean? I have, like <laughs> what you could actually. Dude, I, have the, I have the funniest story. I will not mention names because uh, I will not mention names. So back in the day, we always get you know, after, after parties and stuff like that. And some of my friends, you know, <clears throat> would come up and they would just hug me and kiss me. Mwah! Fucking love you, Rhino. I'm like, okay, All cool. Right, bro. Right, okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Next guy. Mwah! And it's like, fuck. After a couple of times, I told my wife, I'm like, man. I don't know. I think those. Guys, I think they might be gay. She's like, "What are you talking about?" But they come up and they hug me all the time and kiss me and tell me they fucking love me. So, we went to uh, Vegas and two these these guys I'm talking about. <laughs> they're big. Yeah. <laughs> okay? right. So they're like, "Hey, you know, let's try some MDMA or whatever." I'm like, oh, "Fuck, okay, why not?" Tried it this and that. We're on the dance floor dancing, you know, and this and that, and and those guys all of a sudden it hits them, you know, like whoa. And they're like, do you feel anything? I go, not I yet. Feel, I don't feel shit, dude. Like, I think this stuff sucks, you know? <laughs> I'm dancing all of a sudden. <gasps> Boom. Yeah. Dude, I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor. I'm like, oh, shit. They're like, they're like, you okay? You okay? I, wait, I get up. I'm like, mm. oh, fuck. I hug them. Mm. I fucking love you, man. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. I get, I get, it. get it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I just thought, man, I thought they, they, they like boys. But. Yeah, so the same thing. Came up hugging and kissing them, man. But that love's in you. Yeah. That yeah. love, like, so let's say you take it in a pill form, right? Yeah, and well, this, that, I, That's why mushrooms are helping people with PST, PTSD P, yeah. and all that because you're like, oh, I can feel this it, way. It is this in isn't, me. Yes. This is in me. Yes. Because that's all, again, a road sign. 
Yes. That's all these things. It's, yes. it's, it's a road sign. It's not, it's not a, you don't want to go there every fix. time you no. need that thing. You, no. that's, it's there to realize. And, and it, this, this is, this is what I kind of preach. If I preach anything when it comes to like, I'm a big meditation advocate of yes. like, I've put thousands of hours in it at this point. Like I literally have a fucking timer. <laughs> so it's like, I know the time yep. that, that I've put in and it's like, the lesson to take from this and and you can use psychedelics you can use mdma you can use motocross you can use surfing you can use you can get to a place where because what what we are before like i was explaining this to a couple of friends the other day it's like this fucking thing like that mouse is not (laughs) that's not conscious yeah it's in the universe yeah but it doesn't know it's in the universe it's not having this experience and it's like what we are at our base layer, the ground floor, the bottom is experience. We're yep. conscious. Yes, yes. We're having an experience, right? That's all this is, is a living a living experience on this uh, earth this earth ship. While you're here. Because this 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 earth it's a it's a it's a ship, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a plane. <laughs> and so the if you're on MDMA yeah. and you have that yeah. intense feeling of love, that's within your conscious experience mm-hmm. somewhere. And then when you're riding motocross and like you said, when you're on the fucking edge Mm -hmm. and you go silent and you go quiet and it's almost like you're just existence, you're just purely experience, you're you're pure experience. So that's a, that feeling is available to you anytime that you look for it. If you have done the work and if you yeah. realize these it, things that, over that's and over. in you just as much as rage would be in somebody that never felt rage yeah you know it's yeah in yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, in yeah, you yeah. that's a it's, great point. it is in you yeah you know everybody has rage in them it just nothing has pulled it out yet yeah right and so everybody has that love in them just has never been pulled out and i don't care it, it, the guy that murdered 12 people he has love in him mm. he has love in him can't say they don't you know there's something in his life i'll guarantee that Makes would him, extract that they would extract that make him soft maybe yeah. he has a child maybe this now that part of him wanting to kill 12 people that's that's you know whatever it is have you ever read the green the green mile i saw the i saw the movie Man, right the same the, movie yeah the movie yeah, and the, yeah the, the book the book, book is, is better. fucking amazing yeah. so you know how you just said there's like the the murderer can love yeah. something so remember in the book the the serial killer that had uh, in the movie the serial killer that had the mouse yeah yeah and he just fell in love with that yeah. mouse and yeah. the dude was on death row for like the most horrific <laughs> yeah. murders in in history it's like yeah. you're so right like there's something in in everybody has love has rage has passion has you yeah. know has all of Ex- these except things except the people that are rule are ruling this earth i feel that they're not even a human species mm. because they have no compassion like there, there, there's just no remorse you know what i mean it's like a bunch it's like a, a you know the the demon crats are like narcissists or whatever but mm. it's just like there's no remorse you know it's like how can that be how can that be a human that well, can just disconnection take, yeah but but it just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on and keeps on yeah. for years and years and years like nobody's ever blown the whistle nobody's ever come out you know what i'm saying what do they say <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely yeah i guess i don't know just it's hard for me it's like how can this be a human being that could do this to the world or other people you know mm just that's weird well i think you know I, i've used this example before but you think about hitler that's like he's the poster boy for evil yeah like if you ever want to describe evil like hitler's the first dude anyone references right yeah he probably thought he was doing a good thing yeah well yeah he did he uh, did he, ever, thought, he thought he was taking out he was thought he was taking out a race that was inferior that, that was that was inferior yeah, or yeah. that was controlling too much money or yeah, you know yeah, whatever yeah. so there's many ways of looking at it but there's been people that have killed africans you know the the the, the king of uh, uh belgium you know i mean so human history i mean there's just been some awful people you know yeah. i read this book the little the little book of hist- uh, hi- world history or whatever it was and it just went from timeline all the way through time i got done with that book i didn't want to be a human being we have slaughtered and killed and destroyed more of our own species than anything on earth there's not a species on earth that kills its own species except in protection mm-hmm. we we just we just you know we kill e- each other all the time <clears throat> yeah. and it's it's a strange thing oh, what, what was know? the name of the book again 
It's just some kind of like, like a, a short history of the world. Yeah, a brief something history. like that. I've, yeah. I've read it's it. Like as, a, I read like, it this year. It's a red. It's a red cover, I think. Well, I mean, uh, whatever. They're also they're yeah. different editions of different. Yeah. So something that talked about Geng- Genghis, Genghis, the Genghis Kong, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. just it showed yeah. all the wars and all the Christians yeah. and all, what the, how they killed people and Dude, just slaughtered people because they didn't think the same way. Think how long ago the li- the <laughs> Library of Alexandria was, like yeah. thousands of years, and they had this fucking incredible library with like all of human knowledge in it, and then they. It was a fucking the crusades came along yeah, and, it's and destroyed then it's it. gone yeah. and you're just like fuck where would we be yeah like as humans that, that's the crusades where would we be? yeah the, these religions to me these religious these religions stopped our progression hmm. and i feel that's where humanity is right now we're bored we're stuck what our educational system is old it's 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 it has to be boring to these kids nowadays you know what i mean it's not evolving with our our creativity the political system is just so dirty that we can't trust anything. Mm. And to me, the religious system too is old. It's old, you know. Let's 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 put some spice into it. Yes, there's some great road signs, there's some amazing gems, but man, we're we're a species of progression, and we're not. Mm. So I feel we're all feeling kind of stale, bored, because these main factors are education, uh, our protection, which should be government, and our spirituality is broken. It's old. Mm. It's boring. You know, mm. we sh- we should be able to keep keep evolving, and um, I don't know. I just I just see that. Yeah, you yeah. Because <clears throat> so before I know you've got to get out of here at some point shortly. Oh, check yeah. the traffic actually. See where you're at. I don't want to. I don't want to fuck you over on that. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna ask you before before you do go. Uh, I got a little bit more time now. Oh uh-huh. yeah. What's it saying? Uh, she gets in at eight thirty five now. Oh sweet, we're Gucci. Dope. All right, cool. Yeah, we're good. So we'll talk. A yep. t- we'll talk a tiny bit of motocross yep. because people really care what you think. <laughs> oh, actually, before we talk, <laughs> I took my knee br- knee braces yeah. off after mm-hmm. we spoke. I haven't mm-hmm. worn a set of knee braces since yeah. the last podcast that yeah. we did. Uh, a lot of people did as well. <laughs> um, are you? Tiny. I guess that was you created a bit of a movement there. Oh, yeah. Like that shit was that shit was crazy. And I mean, we saw a lot of guys <laughs> like. I know a lot of the pro dudes as well that are that are taking um, yeah. knee braces off, and it I think it was crazy too because you you said the whole Marvin neck brace thing and then literally the yeah. week after yeah. coincidence odd like yeah. I'm it not could, saying yeah, yeah. who could have fucking, been who it fucking just, knows it just it could yeah it just was a but of, what actually happened was the, the, the timeline <laughs> the timeline of history whether yeah. it had any influence or not is Ron Hughes does Gypsy Tales and says Marvin won't win until he takes his neck brace off and and, <laughs> yeah, so next, all yeah. and then the next weekend Marvin wins his first race in fuck knows how long with no neck brace yeah. on uh, but then you break your neck yep. at Washougal yep. so like I'm curious to know <clears throat> does any of your thoughts around any of these things change as a, or as a result of what you've been through uh, no definitely not because the thing is is that the way I broke my neck was a neck brace wouldn't have done anything like maybe maybe made it worse because it had a it'd have a it'd have a hinge on it it'd have something to leverage over you know so if if the bike landed on my head now it has something more to leverage on yeah right so um that one but the other thing is how many accidents or how many problems would i have had before this happened being in such bad technique such bad form such bad positioning there's so i have to fix anybody that comes to me and they bend at their knees first i say hey you wore a neck brace they're like yeah how do you know i say because look how you bend you bend at your knees so your upper body goes backwards to be able to see up <clears throat> and if these things were so great one now there is one person in the whole entire pro sport almost that wears a neck brace Who, and that's, who's wearing uh, it? um um tyga Mm. yeah he still wears one yeah you know but uh what's his tops uh took it off so again i don't care it just you know everybody everybody thought oh crazy oh wow but then they tried it and then they started thinking about the logical the logical sense i was making about positioning Mm. and what's happening and and you're throwing off you're throwing out of balance so much more being out of position on the motorcycle than the uh, position wise than the bike being out of whack you get what I'm saying? Mm. So if the bike isn't handling good, we can get around a little bit, but you being out of position, you're only going to go so fast because you, your technique can only handle so much speed. And once that speed is too fast, your technique to handle, you become flat or you become dangerous. Mm. Right? So again, 
the, these, these things are put into motocross to make money. These things are put into motocross to create fear, you know? And then everybody thinks, oh, Rhino's crazy because, you know, knee braces, he doesn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. But have you ever tried them, tried without them? Because anybody that's starting motocross now would never, anybody starting motocross before I said something would have never tried just knee pads mm-hmm. because you were, you were brought into the sport with knee, knee braces on now. You don't start this sport unless you have knee braces, right? Mm. Because it's just in our mindset, oh, that knee braces are going to save knees. Oh, that knee braces are this and knee braces are that. Well, let's go back 20 years and everybody that's that's hurt a knee has had knee braces on. You know what I'm saying? So for people to say that, it's just because they haven't tried it. Mm. And I don't push it because if I pushed it, then I'd have have, have a company or I'd be making money from EVS, which didn't pay me a cent. So screw those guys. No, serious, man. I sell 900 pair of uh, things and they say, ah, we don't want anything to do with you. I'm like, okay, cool guys. Yeah, appreciate that. And um, <clears throat> now maybe we should take that part off. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> right. uh, so, uh, but anyways, that that's just going off logical thinking. How the body's been designed. How was the body designed before anybody thought they could make it better? And that's by putting shoes on, which fucked it up. By putting knee braces on, which screwed it up. You know what I mean? <clears throat> by doing, but giving him vaccines, which screwed it up. <laughs> you can't, you know, you can't, you can't mess with perfection. You can't mess, you know, it's hard to. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess just having the, I guess just having the mindset to be able to see it and having the balls to be able to speak it, mm. you know, and then having the fortitude to take people's shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, yeah. again, when you speak the truth, you always win. And it just, it just, just, again, just takes time, you know, takes time, takes time. So, but yeah, there's a few people and I feel, you know, I feel more people would benefit like even Eli, you know, I'm like, dude, how, what are you, you're coming back to, you're coming back off injury and I've kind of had some conversations with them. Come back off injury. You're coming back to race somebody that, you know, that's, you know, you're racing jet and these guys, what are you bringing back new? What are you coming back with new? That's my thing. Don't just come back, come back with something new. But how could you make something new? You know, I've talked to him maybe about, you know, yoga and this and that. But also, well, what about taking your knee braces off? That could that could add a little bit extra, you know? Mm. And again, when you have more movement, it's like it's like having another shock on your bike. Now, you know, one shock and I keep bottoming out when I'm going to have two. So, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to have more efficiency in the body. And whatever you don't use, you lose. Meaning that if you immobilize the knee, the knee is going to get weaker. And again, to me, all knee braces slide down too. So this is my issue. So if all knee braces slide down and now let's say your knee joints here and the knee braces down now here, well, maybe this is what's causing problems. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It should be here based right up, right, you know, based on your knee, correct? But if it slides down here, well, now there's different leverage points. Mm. And that could be the problem is that it's the leverage point is causing those ACLs and all these different things, you know? And uh, so... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I my know, my I my, my, my personal experience has been, uh, yeah, it's been good. Like, <laughs> I I'm curious to, um, I actually I actually would like to just put another pair of yeah, knee braces on just to, yeah, because it's been two years of not, and but I mean, oh, how's this? So, I crashed. Oh shit, son! So that was <clears throat> that was on the weekend. No, oh, wow. and uh, so my. It was like a tabletop and then that, you know, when you put the dozer blades in, you get like the pillows on the side. And so it was first lap of practice at the race and a guy was on my inside and he was jumping the whole tabletop and I was still doing, I was on a slight lap sort of thing, you know? And so I, I moved over to the right to give this guy space to do his thing. But then I like, it's kind of a blind jump and I just jumped when my front wheel landed just right on that pillow and I just got thrown over the bus. And so that, line is mm. from i think the clutch perch yeah. you know the bolt on yeah. the clutch perch yeah. if i had a knee brace on yeah i would have got stuck to the you know what i mean yeah so you could have like, got you could have got stuck or it could have or could it could have saved you or could have saved you because it had that carbon fiber thing there you know but so, i mean that's a minor <laughs> injury but yeah. i went flying i went straight over the handlebars i rolled out of it and i was completely fine but it's like so there's always in every scenario there's yeah. always like a uh, like it would probably help for this it wouldn't help yeah, for I mean, that I, I, it, I broke I broke both my legs uh, tip fib under my knee braces yeah you know both of them before I know Cody and, Mackey broke two femurs yeah, in the same place and, at the top and I broke my femur without one on yeah. without a knee brace on yeah. just because I hit perfectly you know yeah so and again 
So I think it's that's just worth the, the, saying. The, the, you the, know? the sport needs to evolve a little bit. You know, we don't need as much so much protection because you crash, you're crashing. You're going to get hurt. It doesn't matter if you have chest protectors on. Some things can help, of course, but you know, it's just the more robotic you are, you know, the worse it is. And again, you picked a sport, bro. So why why are you so scared of it? Yeah. And that's what blows me away is all these kids and parents want to spend so much money, put so much time into it. But I'm like, I have to motivate you. I have to try to try to convince you or whatever to, to, to love what you say you love to do. And how can you be afraid of something you love so much? Mm. What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, how can you be afraid of this? Mm. But so many people are afraid and it's a weird thing. It's like, how can you pick this sport, but be afraid of it? Yeah. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, um, <clears throat> what it, you worked with Eli for a, a bit, a bit yeah. early in his career. What was that experience like for you? Because you see, I mean, he's like one of the quietest, most yeah. secretive kind of guys in the sport. But the work ethic is as obvious, yeah, work, as, obvious yeah. as it gets, you know? Yeah. So like you would have seen things and you would have had such a, a more intimate experience with him than most people would. Like, what do you make of him, the person? And like, what, what, what do you see in him that like let him be so successful? Um... <clears throat> uh, he's, you know, he's a very down to earth person. And I think that comes from his mother and his father from For being, sure. from being successful already. Yeah. But then also living in Colorado, you know, he lives in Colorado. He lives in the most, the most amazing place. I mean, it's beautiful. So it's hard to get so out there when you're living out there, you know what mm. I mean? So combination of things, one mom and dad, two teaching worth work, ethic, work ethic, three living in Colorado where he does not in SoCal. <clears throat> and, um, the other thing, yeah, just I think there, there, people have this born intensity, and he has that. So on the bike, you know, we worked a bit. <clears throat> excuse me, and I helped him with his technique. And I think the first time I worked with a Supercross, I took a second and a half off his lap time just by um, just by his toes and his hips, not by jumping quads, not by going this, just more efficient. Then we'd work out in the gym, and the intensity that he brought, it would just it's, it's just so much different than everybody else. Like I would be. I would be changing weights, you know, changing stuff. And he'd be sitting right behind me, just kind of like, like shaking, like antsy, like, and right when I said, okay, go boom, he'd grab that thing and just fucking go like hell, you know? And so <clears throat> we had a video, we had video of it. And then other guys would come in and do their thing. I said, Hey, I go, look at this. I go, does that look like you? No, well, that's Eli Tomac. I said, it doesn't matter who it is. It's the intensity that he's putting into it. I go, how about let's look at, let's, 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 let's watch Let's uh, duplicate this guy. Cause he's winning, you know? So I think, you know, that, that is that part, those three things. Other also, he's had a little bit of a good luck charm on his side. This is motocross, man. Sorry. Mm. You know what I mean? And he hasn't had some stupid thing. Like let's say Roxon, right? You know, Roxon didn't do anything wrong. He had that big crash and he got stuck in the wheel. And those aren't, those are just motocross stuff, right? Yeah. yeah or yeah. look at, look at Austin, right? Dude, Dean Wilson. Was yeah. Dean beat. Wilson, Austin, even myself. It's just like some people didn't, don't have that. Carmichael didn't have that. Jeremy didn't have the whatever. So, so again, you do have a little feather in your hat and, um, you know, I, I, I don't see, I don't see anything special in him. Not like a James Stewart or a, a, a jet Lawrence. I just think it's, it's the basis. You know, there's nothing, there is nothing special, but he's making sure that he hits all the important parts. You know, yeah. he's, he's watering the roots, not watering the leaves. Yeah. You know, and the water in the leaves is look at me and my Instagram and, and I got to train like this and I got to make sure I have a heart rate monitor on when I take a shit. I don't think he even wears a heart rate monitor when he trains at all. Mm. He doesn't, you know what I mean? He runs in the hills, doesn't ride bicycles, you know, just does what you're supposed to do. The, the, the sport now to me has gone a little bit wrong with the whole Elden thing. It's just like you're making these little frail little wafers, you know what I mean? And just spending too much time on a road bike, which isn't, you know, I don't think motocross is such about fitness anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Because the bikes are so good. Uh, the, the, the techniques are more efficient. I don't know. I don't see them, you know, I don't see them having to work as hard as, let's say, back in our day. Mm. When the bikes didn't go anywhere and you had to just, just go and yeah, go and ride a 125. Power. I mean, 125, yeah. you rode as hard as you could the whole entire time. Mm. So, you know, you had to be super fit that way. So I think now it's not so much fitness, it's more efficiency technique, which you're seeing jet. Jed is passing these guys not by doing quads, not by shifting another gear, but by technique, by keeping this rear wheel on the ground, on the ground. always getting traction, never losing momentum, never stopping and going, always in a constant feel, not in a constant thought. 
because a thought will make you ride Barsha, a feel will make you ride Jet. Yeah. Right? And um, so that's what I see with Jet is that he his approach is uh, very efficient, his technique is very sound, and his focus is very disciplined. Yeah. You know, because to go 14 motos straight or more with some, the, the second fastest guy in the world on your ass and you don't make a mistake, that was pretty profound. I, yeah. I was, I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was taken back because I've never seen anything like that. Carmichael would make a mistake a little bit, you know what I mean? But just, yeah. but they weren't pressured like this, I don't think. You know, when Carmichael did it, he had Wyndham and this and that, but just, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But no, just no, I, I kind of agree with <laughs> you. Maybe I'm wrong, I but anyway. I said something similar. Yeah, so, but just his approach and this and that, because um, I don't think, you know, it's not like Jet is killing everybody by fitness, and he's not killing everybody by raw speed. He's killing everybody by constant momentum and not having to fix mistakes and never losing traction. Yeah, yeah. You so know? I, I want to go, maybe we'll dive a little bit deeper into Jet, but with Eli coming back for this year, Mm-hmm what do you think is possible for him do you think that because i personally think you're at a1 you're gonna see a level of love and appreciation oh, yeah. for a rider that we've maybe never seen before yeah i told i told him i said hey look <clears throat> i talked to him i said this is the, this is the perfect opportunity i go if you're smart this is what you do you'd get a film crew and you'd hire a film crew, just like F1 or whatever, maybe not that big, but just a film crew. And you document your return, my return and my last year. Yeah. You will be an absolute fucking hero. Bro. Because everybody loves everybody loves the, the comeback and everybody loves the last show. Mm -hmm. I go, you would be a legend and then you'd have a, a documentary behind it of your injury coming back and your year of retirement. I mean, dude, come on. Plus, Come on. think about this. He's the American hero. Yeah. And who's the, you got this young <laughs> Australian that yeah. just went 22 and 0. And, you know, Jet is like, people will not like Jet just based on how fucking good he is. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, I I honestly believe that when Eli comes back, you and stadiums in America would have never seen this level yeah. of love and appreciation for a rider. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Him, that's definitely, and also you're gonna see how how sold out they're gonna be because Jet, you got Jet, you got Sexton, and you have Tomac and Deegan. Yeah, but in the four, you know, in the four fifty class, that. But in terms of people coming yeah, yeah, to the stadiums, Deegan, yeah. you know, like he's gonna bring. Yeah, like dude, there were some nationals. I was talking to Cincerello about it, but. Well, I was went to Washougal, and it was like a fucking Beatles concert really? out the front of Star, bro. Wow. Like it was actually and no, and nobody's there for anybody else, huh? No, no, no. It was cra and the other riders, you can see them just being like, "Fuck this shit!" Like this is really annoying. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like that's the level that that they're yeah, bringing. Yeah. But um, what? How do you think it will be being a thirty year old athlete coming back from an injury like that? Um, I it's uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I I mean. You know, for me, Look I know, you. I know at fifty, <laughs> I know at fifty, at fifty, I, I would, I'd be able, to, I would qualify for national, and that was kind of one of my goals. I wanted to do at fifty, qualify for national, but never got a chance. So thirty, and yeah, dude, he's still young, <clears throat> this and that, and I'll get in supercross doesn't take much out of you, and there's only so fast you can go in supercross. So it's not like outdoors where it's just like there's no limit, kind of. Supercross, you only can go so fast. So Jet's not going to be that far ahead of everybody mm. i really don't think no no, no well, we've kind of seen it a little bit no in way. the smx yeah you know I, I think it's gonna be so much closer than the outdoor just because he's he's closer you know and um but, but i think it's gonna be a good battle and yes de definitely eli can you know come back and shoot for that title but it's gonna be different but you know okay what do you bring what, what are you bringing new to the table you know, these other guys have some new tricks, some new things, some some new ways. So you got to bring something new to the table, also. Mm. So yeah, no, I'm so excited to see. Yeah, it. No, it's like, gonna be good. Will you Will you go to A1? You think? Oh yeah, of course. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'll go to A1. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go to A1 and watch that. A2, watch at home. No. <laughs> so uh, yeah, to to go a bit deeper into Jet, I completely agree. I think yeah. that I said the other day that you know you look at. Like, people criticize him saying the field was depleted and it was the weakest 450 field ever. And I disagree. I think that when you've got Sexton there that was there last year pushing Tomac to his absolute limit, 
and that same guy is there and he's beating the same guys by the same margins yeah, as the you, year before. What do you, what do you mean? The only person the only person that was missing that could have been a problem is Eli. Yeah. Everybody else was not even not even it's not even relevant. You, everybody should be sending thank you cards to Chase. <laughs> or this would be the dumbest thing you ever can ever see and you'll never see anybody ever win again. Yeah. You won't. You won't. Plessinger will never beat uh sex or um, jet straight up. No way can't can't <laughs> yeah so you know it's it's it, it's the writings on the wall and it's not that the field was depleted he just you know when it'd be different the field is depleted and he barely won no he went 22 and you know 22 and 0 yeah there was no mistake about that eli's never done that sexton's never done that you know what i mean and everybody else didn't even just decided they're getting seconds and thirds and fourths yeah right it was yeah. like racing against james stewart again on 125 yeah just why just get second you're good <laughs> yeah and like do you remember your like the the way you felt as a rookie in the 450 class like could you imagine like put yourself in your rookie year now mm -hmm. and then imagine going 24 and 0 yeah. in your rookie year yeah i mean it would be it'd be hard it'd be hard not to walk around with just straight wood all the time you know what i mean <laughs> but like, what dude, would, can you put that thing away yeah how i just went 24 and 0 <laughs> i don't need to really <laughs> yeah yeah go around it yeah, yeah go around it or you can hop over it <laughs> yeah. if you want to get on it and take a ride you can but you know <laughs> it's so true <laughs> it's that fucking big but like what 24 and 0 what would have you had to do you know what I mean? Like to go 24 and 0 in your oh, rookie year. Jesus. Like it, it's, it, it's, is it, it be, even possible I don't in your think mind? It, I don't think it's impossible. McGrath, you know, McGrath, Emig, LaRocco, Larry Ward, Kodrowski, you know, uh, I mean, you know, just, 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 I mean, Jesus. I mean, there's a lot of guys, you know, that era had a lot. There's Stanton. I mean, there was a lot of guys in that era, 90 era. Yeah. Right? Guys retiring and guys coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> so so but imagine so imagine you're six motos in to your yeah. rookie 450 career yeah and you're perfect yeah how do you even carry that weight yeah like, i guess i guess you just, on every level it's fucking crazy yeah and again it was there was never even a bobble you're not even a wheel out of place and then a lot of races and so and then he went past people like they he was on a different track and it was just because of the way he's riding mm. <clears throat> so um yeah and you know but things can change too things yeah. can change now more pressure yeah. now people are going to learn and more bring of a it up. microscope more of a microscope yeah he, not now you know because the first year just get your feet wet same with Deegan you know let's see yeah. how you handle sophomore year that you're expected to win because mm. sometimes that has a change I don't think it will with both these kids but you never know until you see it or even just one injury one mm. nagging fucking injury that takes a while to heal yeah and one nagging injury that kind of never goes away because it's nagging now you've just diminished yourself you know what i'm saying so mm. they, this this can happen very easy so don't just think that uh, writing's on the wall the writing's on the wall to be the most amazing rider we've seen but this is also motocross you know yeah so. and so in the two years since we last did this yeah. Has any of your philosophies around technique or anything changed? Is that, or are you pretty like sort of solid in the belief system that you have around? Yeah, I don't the think sport? I don't think you can again a motorcycle. How are you going to change a motorcycle? Mm. The way it's been designed is the way it's been designed. The mechanics of it, the di the dynamics of it, the front wheel, engine, rear wheel, handlebars have always been in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's changed through you know, evolution, but you're never changing the body at where it's the best. So again, if a motorcycle, you can't change this dynamics to make it work and feel like a motorcycle, then you're never going to change something that has been intelligently designed the human body and, and say that it's going to work better. You know what I mean? So for me, the technique that you're seeing now, the toes, the hips, the back, this, you're not, you're not going to make anything better mm. because that's where the body's at the strongest. It's not, Oh, this is rhino's technique. So we can change yeah, this it. This is mechanics. No, this is just as this is mechanics, man. Yeah, this is yeah, this is yeah, physics. Yeah. This is bike and machine. Or I mean, bike and you know, body and machine that you can't you can't change. You can't you know, mechanics are mechanics. You mm -hmm. know, and so with that, I, I don't think you're going to see anything change. You know, maybe Jed has brought a little bit of a of a softness to it. You know what I mean? But the bases are still the same. He's on his toes. His hips are out. Maybe his legs are a little bit straighter. You know what I mean? His arms are a little bit straighter. Comes back away from the motorcycles a little bit, uh, stuff like that. But um, 
you're not gonna yeah you're not gonna see someone what are you gonna do what, what else is there drop your arms but tuck your butt round your back no yeah that, that you, you can't do that in motocross if anybody's doing that in motocross you might as well just quit because you're never going to get anywhere yeah and that's the problem you see you see Cincerello tuck you see anderson tuck hunch you see plessinger tuck and hunt and what, what are those guys always doing yeah they move they move on the motorcycle four times more than or 10 times more than uh sexton and jet do yeah off every jump there's almost two to three movements where jet and sexton's one movement boom yeah boom yeah boom one movement hips out pat pop these guys are back over to the side elbow down and then they come over yeah. you know i mean it's ways they're just so floppy sloppy you know that they can't keep because anytime that you're coming over to the side you're going to be off the throttle teeny bit or pulling the clutch in you know what i mean yeah but yeah. if you're always directed in the line that you want the direction you want well then you can be aggressive you can you're getting traction you're having you're having to, you're able to relax but if i'm always doing this well then if i counterbalance a motorcycle what am i doing i'm tightening up yeah. So I don't go any farther. Yeah. And then I'm tightening up to bring myself back over. But if I'm just right in the middle, well, I can just let this happen. You know, bike goes to me and away from me, to me and away from me. And that's what you see more of Jet and Sexton and Hunter. Yeah. You know, that, that, that scenario. <clears throat> what do you think the difference is between Jet and Sexton? Because, I mean, I think the, the 250 is a weird gauge because they're faster than the 250s mm -hmm. like in terms of they want more and more it's like fuck go cunt yeah <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like you go like, do it go but on a 450 you've got everything that yeah. you need so i think that jets efficiency and those mechanics they come into play so much more because mm -hmm. he was tapped out on that little bike and it's almost like he's yeah. trying to push the thing to keep it yeah the, it four, going. the, the 450 definitely helps with his with his uh weight because I'm sure he's about 180 pounds, you know, <clears throat> and um, and also his his, his approach very yeah. smooth, very calculated, very precise. Sexton has the same thing. I just see for me, I see more technique the problem. So With when, Sexton, when, yeah, when Sexton goes hard and this and he kind of has a little bit of a butt tuck and he cuts the rounds into the motorcycle, and then you see that motorcycle start to bounce around a little bit more. Yeah, I feel if he would straighten, this is where I feel I think you see a, a better Sexton in Supercross. Because he doesn't have to race so hard, he can still kind of just float through the track so he, he can, can keep that style. He can be more technical. The back is usually more straight. The hips are more out. There's more extension on the bike is what I see in Supercross. This year, I think, <clears throat> I just think it was kind of a, a weird thing. Coming off Supercross, winning the championship, you know, wah, and then, uh, and then got hurt and then came back and then wanted to beat Jets so bad that he almost overrode a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had a talk with them too. Oh, I said, because okay. uh, uh, after Bud's Creek, I said, ah, yeah, I sent a message to him because the last 10 minutes of the second moto, he was just f on fire. Ripping. Ripping. And I said, ah, I, and I sent a message. I said, uh, I guess you found, you, you found, uh, found your flow again. I go, sometimes it takes time because, you know, what I saw at the last 10 minutes was, was the real chase. The chase that I'm seeing is, is wanting to beat Jet so bad that you're almost riding a little bit tense yeah. and not trying to make and not make a mistake that you are making mistakes. And this one, you just let it go. And he goes, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. He goes, that's exactly what it was. And so I thought for sure the following race that he was going to beat him, you know, at, uh, at, um, Iron Man. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah. going to, I was going to post something to him. Like, okay, he's going to beat him. And then the race out, the race got ended. I'm like, damn good thing. I didn't say this. <laughs> 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 but yeah, just because I saw that second moto, how he rode, we talked, he said, yeah, you're completely right. And then I thought, okay, cool. He found his, he found his flow again. Cause sometimes that's all it is. It's like, you're just in this little bit of a, in a box, you know what I mean? The cover closed and then finally you break out of it and go, oh shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it just sometimes takes one moto, one lap, one, one something. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, <clears throat> yeah. What, uh, one of the things that I think I see and as someone, uh, I'm that amateur enthusiast of motorcycle technique. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not Ryan Hughes, <laughs> but one thing that yeah. I see as a big difference, um, and I've spoke to, chase a lot because i think you know up until this outdoor season chase Sexton was the benchmark of technique yeah, like yeah, there was yeah. nobody that nobody in the world would have said that anyone was better than, yeah. than chase and then jet come along and was like i can just go one percent better yep is is more more to me more of his body's opened 
you know. His hips are more opened up. His legs are more straight. His back's a little bit more straight. So now you're allowing the arms to be looser. And whenever that bike goes sideways, now the whole body can it's move. Yeah. yeah, so the yeah. hips can move. And then when, because you, when you round your back like Sexton was doing a little bit outdoors, you round it. Well, it's like it's putting a steel bar from here to your hips. Yeah. But your spine opened up has mobility through yeah, every vertebrae. Yeah, yeah, so even yeah. if it, because you don't, a, a, tree, a tree sways, but you don't see where it's swaying at. So the back, you know, the, the, the spine will sway but you don't see it so much. So even a jet has a little bit, yeah. well, that's more than that. Yeah. Now you're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so yeah. just these, just these little things and also straighten your legs up. You see a lot of guys like a Hampshire, um, <clears throat> a couple other guys that ride bent legged, you know, they never extend their arms are always half cocked. Their legs are always half cocked. So they're always stuck into the bike. Yeah. Yes. And this is why they get thrown off so much. Yeah. But it, jets, it's in like contraction. Yes. But jets stand, cause again, you can't be in that motorcycle bending knees forward and, and pushing back or pulling up and not have your arms tight. Yeah. Yeah. So jets straightens up more, straightens up more. So now the motorcycle's doing this. Yeah. You know, he's not in the motorcycle and having to do the counterbalance it so much, yeah. which I see those guys come in. To me, that comes from neck braces. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I don't think those kids ever wore them. Yeah, yeah. I doubt So it. one thing that I see um, is you like you're really splitting hairs, but I feel like through the so Chase's crashes happen kind of pu- just past the halfway mark of the turn, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then he loses that <clears throat> that front end traction. Mm-hmm. And through my conversations with him and like we're talking about it, he would say like the most pressure I feel on the motors because that's, that's my biggest interest was like, what's the most pressure you feel on the motorcycle? Where's the point that you're the tightest connection to it? Yeah. And he would say feet, like his feet are yeah. the thing. He generates so much yeah, force tight, yeah. through the motorcycle with his feet. Yep. And so we did the podcast like kind of after you did and, um, and then I went away and I was like, I need, I want to figure out what makes it so that when I'm riding, I feel the bike yeah. the most through my feet. Yeah. And I think that watching the outdoors this year, you could see, and from doing it myself a little bit, like you can feel how much force you can put through the bike, but it seems like Jet is unloading that weight in like the rough braking bumps coming into the turns. And that's why I don't think you never really see him losing the front uh, and having those crashes is because the bike's so light and free. I think Chase has... So, like, Dubai was... I was living in Dubai at the start of the year, mm-hmm. and it was fucking awesome. Like, the craziest sand track. Like, yeah. 100 kilometer an hour <laughs> yeah. whooped out straights. And, like, when you push away from the motorcycle with your toes, but your head's over the bar pad, and you're, like, spreading that yeah. weight out, that's the position that they're yep. getting in. Yep. Dude, you can feel the force like the bike will kick in the sand and, and you can feel that it's just so locked and rigid and not going anywhere and the suspension's working and you're staying straight yeah. and you can accelerate but then it's almost like jet finds that he has that level of force and traction when he's under acceleration but then once he gets into the bumps he finds a way to like pick it up and float and it, it seems like to me chase stays in that pressure force mode and it feels like that to me yeah. is what makes that front goes because there's still force and you're on an angle and then that's when you need flex and chassis in it and if you're forcing and keeping so much rigidity in there then maybe that's some of the reason why he's having those issues yeah i think i think the one of the biggest things <clears throat> is one yes i don't know if any of that makes sense sorry. no it makes total sense So, yeah, you want to control the motorcycle at the lowest point possible from bike to ground, and that's at the foot pegs, closest to the rear wheel, because that means you're controlling 90% of the motorcycle. You want to be on your toes, so then you have have, uh, softness from the first point of contact from body to bike. You want to squeeze with your ankles, because if you're on your toes and you're squeezing with your ankles, you're probably only this far away from the rear wheel, right? So when you squeeze there, well, then you can be loose up here. Mm. If you don't squeeze down here, you got to be tight up here. And if you're tight up here, this will never control the rear end of the motorcycle. That's why there's separation in it. You have to have separation to ride a motorcycle, right? And that's where your hips come in. So when you see Jet, he every time he hits a jump, pop. Every time he lands, pop. Every time he hits a braking bump, pop. Every time he accelerates, pop. 
he every he initiates at the hips because if I initiate the hips, that's allowing traction to go to the rear wheel. It's allowing the upper body to go forward with the direction of the motorcycle, and that's allowing my core to come into play because now it'll stabilize me mm. and it'll allow looseness in the back end. Well, won't affect me from the upper half. Now, if I'm hunched or tucked, all that's going to be you know, be an, be an issue. Right. So now let's talk about chase. What I see with chase and with jet going off what you're, what you observed is that chase is maybe going gas to break where mm. we're, you know, gas uh, and then break and then gas. And so that's causing transition yeah. where jet comes in. Roll. Yeah. Yeah. Where chase is maybe coming and then and get on the gas real quick. Kind of Eli, kind of this style, right? And because he's a beast physically too. Yeah, he's a big dude. So what I'm saying is so that would make more transitions is going break gas, break gas instead of break, roll, roll. Ah, I guess I'll roll a little bit more with a little pop of the throttle and then I'll get on the gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how fast I come in the corner if I come to a stop. Doesn't matter how slow this person comes in the corner. If he has constant momentum, they're probably always going to meet at the same spot. Yeah, yeah. But you're always going to have better traction with constant momentum, Stefan Everts. You know what I mean? You're not going to have these transitions where you see mistakes like you see maybe Barsha because he's too aggressive. Roar, roar. You know what I mean? Where Jet, there were the bike. You don't even see the bike. The trans. You don't even see it move. You know what I mean? It doesn't do this or this, right? And so I think that's the biggest thing is, is just the more how much uh, <clears throat> how much roll he has. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I don't even think I don't think he really uses the front brake sometimes come in the corner, which you wouldn't need to. Yeah. A lot of times you don't need to. That that, that offsets the bike a little bit. Yeah. So I would say from well, chase, it's then, a little bit more of that because brake and then gas, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. and then then it influences your bike setup so like i remember when we spoke to plessinger on the podcast mm -hmm. he's saying that he loves a really stiff fork because he slams the front brake on like yeah. he really is heavy on the front brake yeah so then you're stiffening up your forks yeah, it's gonna cause so what's that going to cause issues everywhere yeah else. what's that going to do through the turn like yeah you've got that braking zone where you can be yeah fucking and, and, hard and on how the hard if you brake hard how much energy are you using trying to keep that bike straight yeah. and if you brake hard you get a gas hard because then you slowed all your momentum down yeah and if you gas it super hard like barsha does then you get a brake hard yeah. but if you're jet you're never really you braking never really you know because it's like Stefan Everts, yeah, he kind of has the same thing as Stefan, but Stefan, when he was riding for Honda, they had telemetry on the bike, and when they got done with telemetry, they came back and looked at it all, and they're like, hmm, they had to check. They're like, yeah, it looks like the brake sensor isn't working. No, it's He's working like, no, fine. No, he doesn't it. use the brakes that much. Yeah. Okay, and he goes, oh, the throttle sensor. He's only half throttle. Yeah. Okay, Eli, telemetry, 75% of the time on an outdoor track, he's wide open. Yeah. 75% of the time that throttles to, to the fucking, to the tits, you know? <laughs> so gnarly. <laughs> so dude. two different styles, two different ways, you know, but one way is going to cause maybe a little bit more mistakes than the other way. Cause yeah. again, Stefan didn't make many mistakes, you know? Yeah. And so that's, that's what, that's what I see. And you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how Chase works with this KTM. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, he's not training with Eldon, is he? I don't you think know, he has yeah, to. No, yeah. No. That'd be the worst thing he could ever do. Yeah. You know? serious i think it's just old school you know it's bad energy and uh he has a good program right now his, his guy's good yeah you know they're doing more physic they're doing more um his guy is good yeah yeah he's good he yeah he, he's he's smart but they're doing more um you know i guess uh what's the word i'm looking for but um like they're doing more like foundation yeah sort foundation of shit. stuff but more you know functional yeah. just functional yeah. you know yeah. you, again you, what, what do you a 12 pound bicycle riding it every day all the time and it's like the fuck yeah you know what i mean you're riding a 230 pound motorcycle going through obstacles you know I mean, you got to be strong it's trying and be tough. to spit yes. you off yes yeah. and i think you're starting to see that 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 style of training change yeah you know what i mean that whole bicycle 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 eat a fuck eat eat an almond bicycle bicycle eat an almond you know what i mean yeah yeah I don't, I don't think it's working. So yeah. who knows? But um, it'll be it'll be interesting next year. Does it excite you to have guys like Jet in the sport that seem to be... Because like, all right, we were at Loretta's together. Yeah. You could fucking see it. Yeah. The Jet Lawrence effect. Yeah. Guys with dumbbell and bra... bra like it's, you could just see that the approach in people 
had changed. Not well, everybody. Yeah, but I wouldn't but say I wouldn't say he's the first one to ride this way. You look at Marvin. Marvin was a jumpy little, hoppy little sucker. You yeah, know? but he just didn't win. Yeah, the, no, you know, he didn't win, and he had he had a very uh, kind of not a, not he didn't win. He yeah, won, but he, he kind of had a he didn't have a very exciting style to look at. He didn't have a pretty style. Yeah, you know, like like Jet just looks pretty on the motorcycle. He looks just like a hot chick. He looks like a ballerina. He looks like a hot chick just dancing, you know, riding that motorcycle. If there was no one naked, you know, you just be like. <laughs> you know, right it's crazy yeah, i mean it's, it's it, again i i give respect where respect is due and i'll but i'll i'll cut you to knees where the knees should be cut but that dude's a that dude's a beautiful rider man yeah it really is and, and it, really it is and it shows like uh how um, such a methodical yeah. and calculated nah, approach he, can he's, pay off yeah he's for both boys he's 22 like 42 you know it's like he, if there were, I don't know if there's any writers that ever died. Maybe like, you know, died before he did like a Donnie Schmidt or something. It's re reincarnated, re you know, it's, yeah. it's just like, like, come on, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you see those kids that, uh, that come out, they're four years old and they can just play the piano like Mozart yes. or they can sing like Adele or whatever. You know, it's like, well, hold on. You, no, 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 that, that, that you're, you're just replaying again to be that good that quick. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so dude, it, it's so true way. Eh? It's like a, you know, you see Tiger Woods hit a golf ball yeah. at four years old. Yeah. And it's just like, this amazing. Yeah. Some people just have that, you know, just have that, that gift, that flow, that feel. Yeah. Know? So, uh, it's one thing that I hope that I hope that people can just appreciate it. I think, know? I think people are appreciating because they see that he's, you know, I mean, maybe behind closed doors is something different, but he seems like a very genuine kid, you know, and just like... But you look at the weekend, he got fucking rinsed. He makes a bit, you know, a bit of a silly podium. I think. What do you say? Did you... Did you you didn't see this? Mm. You see how he waved Kenny by? No, I saw that, but yeah, we, yeah but, well, but, but, but what was that for? Just because he wanted to? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. But what did he say it was for? Well, so he said like, he he thought it was, he did the math in his head and he thought each moto paid points. Mm. So he wanted to put someone in between him. Oh, and, but, shit. But he was wrong. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, but okay. he's doing the math while yeah, he's right. Yeah, yeah. So then he says it on the podium and then he, then they're like, okay, that's not how it works. And then I think being the nice, sweet, genuine kid that he is, then I think he tried. He made a joke, being like, "Oh well, Kenny's a new dad, so I thought I'd give him a baby gift. Maybe you can buy him a pimped out stroller or something." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then people are flaming him. And <laughs> for it's, what? For what? Well, he just he missed. You know that. It, so what? Yeah. Yeah. But I, what, I, I, I agree. But, but but what did he what did he say wrong? Well, he got he the, he yeah, he got the he, math wrong. And yeah, the, okay, he yeah. got you, okay. You, yeah. Two motos. I would think sometimes the same, yeah. right? Two motos points. Okay. And if you wave somebody by and you wanted to make a joke because you already made fucking thirteen million dollars this year, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Are you guys just oh? Well, he won the race. Oh, he won know, the overall. Did, did we anyway. hurt people's feelings? Yeah. Did we hurt puppy feelings? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. People's feelings got hurt because they could never do what he did. You know what I mean? I mean, Jesus. And, and that's where I'm like. And these SMXs, these guys aren't taking it that serious at all. No. I don't. It's just, it's just good money, and that's it. And that this kind of irritates me a little bit that this series is happening. One, it's so competitive to knock some some other series out. But if you want to knock, an, if you don't want your riders to leave this series, why didn't you just put all this money into the nationals? Mm. And then you wouldn't have the riders have to do three more races. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because now it just screwed up our donations and all these different things. So you're taking, and and everybody wants to make these three races and all this stuff, but then they're they're degrading the most the most historical race in our sport which is motocross the nations we need to show up there every single year because that's historical that's that that's like the blueprint you know what i mean to me it is and so you put three more races on here and put all this money in here because you don't want people to go maybe do another series why don't you just put the money into the nationals it'd have been simple even half of it five million instead of ten million Mm. right let's make why don't you build what's already there build that bigger well, I think I think like, I I hear what you're saying, but I think that with those extra races and them all being under the one banner, I think that's what brought the money in. Mm-hmm. So I, I yeah, I know what you're saying. But still, I, there, yeah, there, there yeah. there's a way. There yeah. doesn't need to be more races. You know, it's just it's just. I think the, they should. They need. You're to, just tiring these guys out, man. I mean, the sport yeah. is so hard, and they're just. You can see it. You can see it in the racers. It's like they're just done. Mm. They're cooked. Yeah, well, dude, look at Jet and Hunter first. They're done. The, that, oh my the, God. the first one that 
they yeah. didn't look like that at all all year and mm. it just looked like they just not so they good. didn't want to be there but yeah. it was just like fuck i because mm. i think about just i mean i felt I, I don't know if this analogy will hit but there was a point in time where when the podcast starts doing re- like right around when you and then mm-hmm. brian and mm-hmm. then we were just getting like millions and millions of views mm-hmm. every single fucking month and wow. i'm like dude this is like <laughs> forget about all it's like i need to keep, like this is hard to keep up yeah, like yeah, how yeah. do you keep and it if keeps you, that, red, that that again intensity it's, yeah it's again it's, e- it. it's easy you know it's kind of easy to win but it's how do you keep that how momentum keep, keep that momentum going and you've got to find something for it's different you know the analogy falls apart because it's they're completely different things like what i've got to do to keep this going yeah. and what but it's like you but get faced with this thing of like fuck me dead like now i i have to be this guy like mm-hmm. I've, this thing's super successful it, the views are on the fucking screen yeah. like if you want to know how i'm doing just go and look it's on yeah. display yeah. and in the same way you want to know how a race is doing you fucking look at the race yeah. look at the results yeah. it's, and it's like i think about being their age both those boys mm-hmm. and winning t- both winning two championships jet doing a perfect season is rookie Think about the level that that sets of expect, like oh, that, yeah. the I mean, bar that then I mean, you need to yeah, live up to. Yeah, the thing is, is that this this could be, it could be almost all downhill from here. Mm. This season that they had could never be repeated again. You know, Hunter could maybe never win a championship again because he's moving up to four fifty. Jet, you know, who knows? Maybe Sexton, maybe you know, whatever it is. It just this this season can maybe maybe never happen again. So it's almost like. Once you have something like this, it's almost like you'd almost be let down every year if it wasn't this, you know. But you also have to have your, you know, you have to be real about stuff. And that's when and, doing things for the right and reason know, And know that this, say, this is a very finicky sport, finicky time. And to uh, be blessed, honor what's happening right now. Because anything anything can happen, as everybody knows in the sport. So, but yeah, I mean, it would be tough. And again, the higher you are, the farther you fall, my friend. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so that's always, you know, if everybody wants to be so famous, I want to be so big. Okay. But when you're not and you're not, and again, once you're famous and once you're big, man, oh, it's hard to stay there. Yeah. And you got to work. Like they say, when you shine, people Re- hate to see the yeah. glean. Yeah. You got to reinvent yourself all the time, you know? Yeah. 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 So, uh, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It'll be good. It'll be good. I think, I think motocross is coming into a good, a good, a good sport as long as the promoters don't just get too greedy for me. You know, that's my only thing is greed. Yeah, you know, I don't like greedy people. I can't. I don't. Just they don't have. They don't belong anywhere. And unfortunately, that's what runs the world is greed. But yeah. Well, there's guys like you out there that have a message, <laughs> they have a vibe, and you you live what you say. You're uh, you're definitely a, a guy that sticks behind your words, and uh, I think that's why people find you so captivating and compelling. Myself included. I love every time we get to do this. And uh, yeah, and and the thing is, is that. You know, I don't, I don't have a, a, I don't have an enemy on earth. I don't have one person on earth that I have ill thoughts for, feelings for, or words for. Not one. So, because I always speak the truth. And even if I speak the truth, I'm still going to be your friend. Mm. And I'll still, even I've had, I've had some people talk shit about me, you know, some of my friends. And everybody's like, well, what are you going to do? You get pissed? I go, no, no, no. Only thing I'm going to do is just go tell them that I know. And now every time that you see me, you're going to know that I know that you talk shit on me. But I'm still going to be your friend. I'm still going to help you out, and I'll still do anything for you. But you will know that I know that you talk shit on me, okay? We're good. (laughs) You know, so for me, it's like, yeah, I say this, but I, I, I still... I'm still friendly with everybody, you know, don't, don't take what I say and, and, and ruin something else with it. Mm. But I'm also willing to lose friends in the sport that I've been friends with the high ups in the sport to speak the truth. You get what I'm saying? I'll lose friends with you to speak a truth to a million people and not lie to a million people, cover stuff them up just to be friends with one person because you're so-called special. Mm. Nah. You know, so I guess that's that's where people get me is that uh, you know I don't I don't care the consequence as long as I'm speaking the truth. Yeah. You know. Well, so. I appreciate you, mate. And, yeah. Uh, appreciate you. This ain't the last time we'll do this. Nah. We've got an open invite. I love just talking <laughs> life, philosophy, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the all the good shit. Yeah. A yeah. uh, L- little different than you know most most motocrossers, but uh, I love it. 
I guess you've been tested and tried enough. That's what comes out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish you the best with everything. And, Thank uh, you. actually, uh, I'd, while I'm here, I'd like to come up and do your morning routine. With Let's, you do it, Let's do it, Let's dude. Let's do a video. Let's do a video of it and yeah, put it on your yeah. podcast or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It'd yeah. be cool. And I would love Sick. to, I'd love to do some training with you. Let's do it. Okay. Are you, could you do a, like a Glenn Helen mm-hmm. sesh with me maybe yeah, one yeah, day? 100%. I'd love that. That'd be sick. <clears throat> yeah, and the next couple of weeks will be pretty empty for me Yeah, because Ryder's going to take a little break, so I'll have some time to do some one-on-one stuff and things that way. Yeah, well, I'll, um, yeah, November 5th, and then I'm going to be, I'm trying to dedicate all of October towards training, but I okay. fucking I keep getting asked to do shit. Yeah, yeah, well, like, like, just maybe spend a day with me, and then, uh, or two days, one day on the bike, one day, you know this and that then i can go okay let's let's this is bike what you're gonna work on this is the type of training to do let's just find some trails da, 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 da. hey what you eating let's clean this up a little bit nothing crazy but just make a we're just gonna put a little torque on every every spoke so just like lifestyle you know you you, you in lifestyle you got to hit everything everybody's like, how do you eat and hey, it's in paleo and that. i'm like no 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 i hit every spoke of in life with the same torque yeah. so then my wheel is going in in the straight line I don't, I don't only hit three spokes and miss ten spokes, and yeah, now I have, t- over I have, tight and yeah, I've over tightened, yeah, yeah. under tightened. Everything has the same torque, meaning it has the same attention. I'm not, a, I'm not addicted to anything. I'm not obsessed with anything, but I'm very focused on everything. So then my wheel is true. If I, if I'm a, too addicted to things or overdo things or lazy with things, well now I have a spoke and a we, an untrue wheel. So my 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 life is wobbly. <laughs> so and that's the thing is. You know, it's not one thing; it's everything. So hit every spoke with the same torque, and then your your life will start to, you know, run clean. I think. Words to live by. Words to live by. Ron Hughes. Yeah. You're a great man. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you, brother. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, GypsyTales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.